Hello everyone, Hi. welcome back to MT Talk. This is my thumb up. <laughs> Hi. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Andy Talk, episode of 18. 18, I think, 18, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And as you can tell, it is a different one. It is. Um, we have been sponsored by Birmingham City University. To shout have, out to you guys. Shout out to those people and Regina Dudra, he's great, I love him. Woo! Um, we've, yeah, we've been, we've been basically commissioned to have a really kind of cool conversation about diversity yeah. in Britain and yeah. how shit it is. Um, <laughs> or not. Or not, or not. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. So we basically have some of our friends here, <laughs> and um, we just want to have a really, really lovely conversation about yes. diversity, what it is, and yeah. what it's doing. Yeah, I think especially like I think 2016 was like a really interesting time for diversity because I think everybody was it was like it was a time where everybody kind of realized like oh my god like you can put other people in films and everybody kind of got behind it and we're like four we're like five years later now and I feel like a lot of people. Are, kind of talking as if like the industry has completely changed mm -hmm. and you know like Parasite has won and yeah. Will Smith won an Oscar and then and, and, and Jane Campion was director for stuff and you know and Crazy Rich Angels came out and Black and Black Panther and all these films are <laughs> yeah, American. Yeah get out Daniel yeah. Kaluuya yeah, came get out. I was like and he's yeah. changed the yeah. face of Black Britain for <laughs> yeah, everyone. Yeah. yeah exactly the E.E. E. Rising Star Award has had like 20 million black people win it since 2016. <laughs> but nothing else. <laughs> but nothing else yeah 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 nothing else. Um, so that is so that is That's obviously. Horrible. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, but obviously things have changed, hasn't it? It's been it's been a massive change. Since, yeah, like, it's been really interesting. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah. Because um, we're in twenty twenty two now, and I think it's like everyone's like we're. I, I think especially when you're talking to white kind of like um, production companies, I think I think a lot of people are like, hey, we're. I feel like we're doing something at the moment. So I thought it'd be we thought it'd be great to get people from in the industry. We've got actors, writers, directors, producers, um, everyone, um, and we wanted to just have a really kind of like interesting, honest conversation that yeah. isn't just based on our opinions, based on how people that are working in this industry are coming up into it yeah. and their own opinions of it. So um yeah. Yeah, so without further ado, ado let's let's let's, let's get, get into, into this it. Shit. Um, <laughs> yeah. You guys can swear by the way, that's fine. We don't know. Yes, yeah. It's not PG. Shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um okay, so we have four sections of um this conversation mm. and we're just gonna go into each conversation and just let it flow. Let yeah, it flow. for real, for real, for real. Okay, so the first question is, what is the definition of diversity in British film and TV? And again, we want to specify, we, we want to really talk about Britain mm. and what we're doing here because yeah. this is where we are. Yeah. Um, so I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna, I'm gonna shout it out to, to James. Like, what do you feel like, British film and TV, is there, what is diversity in British film and TV to you? Um, I think at the moment there's a lot of window dressing. Oh. I think that um, diversity at the moment, the way it's being defined is like what you can see on the outside. Mm. And I think for me as a writer, I'm more interested in what's happening behind the scenes. Yeah. And I think that, you know, that tells a very different story when we start looking at diversity in terms of writers, producers, yeah. directors, you know, makeup artists, all of those things. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm really interested in in what's happening in that space. Yeah. Because that's really where the real power is. Yeah. yeah. Do you feel yeah. like do you feel like there's a problem? There's a massive problem. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel like do you feel like the problem is, um, do you feel like they're having the window dressing? Mm. Has that changed your, do you feel like we're making way? Do you feel like we're making steps towards something that's different, having the window dressing? And, cause before it was, mm. All white, all round. Yeah, yeah. it was it was four and, no, it was four no part films, and then and then everything. Else. And then everything yeah. else. Whereas yeah, now yeah. we have you know the Bridgerton extras. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the Bridgerton extras and Top Boy. Yeah, um, and, and but yeah, I guess the the writers may have not the writers, the directors, and sometimes even mm -hmm. the producers haven't producers changed so much. Mm -hmm. um, do you feel like because we now have some people on screen, mm -hmm. like diverse people on screen, do you feel like we're making a change, or do you feel like it's it is just like Pop them in, we're fine. I think for me, it's change on the surface level. Mm. Okay. Mm. Yeah, and I think it needs to go deeper. Mm. And I think, you know, you mentioned Top Boy, which I think is a great show, mm. but, you know, like I recently found that the main showrunner for that is a white Irishman. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah he's, yeah. you know, in his 50s. Yeah. yeah. 
And I think that brings up another thing about even black stories mm. and who's telling them. Yeah. Mm. You know? Yeah. So even like on the outside, what you're seeing is a show that looks very black. But again, when you start going behind the scenes and, yeah. you know, who's writing those stories, yeah. they mm. don't always look like us. Yeah. Like yeah. Kano and, and um, yeah. Ashley Waters only became executive producers exactly. this season. Yeah. That just came out, which is, yeah. which is strange as it's been out for like... And, the and I, I wouldn't say I've got a, a massive problem with that, but I, I do wonder, I wonder if that show or that film had been written by the, a black person or the mm. people that are, you know, that we're seeing on screen mm. and how different that might have been. Mm. Yeah. Could, I, um, could, I, could you just put your hand up if, if you're a writer, if you, if you write, 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 write for film? Um, We've got four. <laughs> yeah. Including us. Inclu including yeah. us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I only say that because have you, have you guys had any conversations with production companies or with execs where your content is kind of, um, is put up next to another show that's already on? Have you, because I've had, I've had, me and Imelda have both had the Top Boy conversation where um, you have a show that has black teams. More than once, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah more than five. Um, um, <laughs> when you have the kind of conversation of you have like black teens within within an urban setting, um, the first thing that you get is, oh, well, I don't think we could go any further with this because Top Boy's out. Or there's also a lot of conversation at the moment about not wanting projects to be like, like Top, Top Boy. Boy. Um, yeah, I just, want, I just wanted to throw it out to the writers and see, has anyone had any kind of similar experience with that? Not necessarily with that project, but. Anything yeah. in the same realm. With, it's, it's weird for me because I've just started, like during mm. lockdown, I, I wrote a short film and I met someone that um, works for a production company mm. and been developing a series off the back of that. So I'm very fresh into this mm. and kind of just figuring it out. Mm. Um, but I've had that conversation about, mm. oh, mm. yes, this is a great story, but we're currently shooting or working on another project mm. similar to yours, Black. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Right. Um, and so I was like, that feels a bit weird. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm. How is it similar? Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I was yeah, curious yeah. to know what, how it was similar. Uh, um, yeah. But then I'm hearing from other writers that I know that, is like it, yourself. Is that, sorry to interrupt, is it like similar? Would you say there's any similarities at all in genre or is it similar? Is there any similarities well, I don't know without about, going into the project? Yeah. I don't know about the project. All I know is that um, the story is about black people from Britain that aren't involved in gangs. Right. <laughs> so, actually, so actually nothing like Top Boy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, right. And I think yeah. I, the thing mm. I wrote was, insp I was inspired to, I mean, I grew up on like Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Yeah, 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 yeah. I keep reading on my I grew up on Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and, uh, let's see, and let's the Mighty Ducks. Let's see if we can yeah. go a day yeah, I mean. without talking yeah. about yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. But yeah, the Mighty Ducks and My Wife and Kids and watching those, I was like, ah, I feel like I'm a part of that. Do you know what I mean? And I wanted to see a version of that in the UK, mm, even like mm. animation. I was mm. like, I used to watch the um, Boondocks, the Boondocks, yeah. and also the Family. Yeah, Proud, but there's Proud also Family. what was the thing I used to watch? Yeah. Um, MC Hammer cartoons. Do you remember the MC Hammer cartoons? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No yeah idea. Idea. I was so inspired by that stuff. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, but I don't see that in a UK version. I only hear mm. it in American mm. accents. Mm. Anyway, so I just decided mm. decided to like write my own version. Mm. Um, and the second I get in a position where it's like, this is getting really promising. It's like, oh, well, we can't do your one because mm. there's not a black guy. Mm. And it's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's interesting um, to say that. that I'm, so I wonder, Tom, if when obviously you've written or your experiences with writing, if you feel like you being white has anything to do with I guess, companies giving you feedback. Do you ever think that, oh, or you Or to know, do with rejection, do you mean? To rejection, yeah, or maybe to kind of like a, a redirection, I think. I think I've had a lot of like, oh, maybe try and do it like this so it's not mm. so similar to X, but it's actually not similar to X at all. It's mm. very different. Um, so I wonder if you ever feel as a, as a white writer, you know, this is something that yeah. could be a, a obstacle or this is something that I have to think about. Compar I think I think people understand things in terms of comparison, mm -hmm. you know, because because we we understand the world based on what we already know, yeah. you know, and so if I mean I I don't want to I don't want to put myself into the mind of a uh, uh, an executive from a production company, but I what I would imagine was that they are trying to oper operate their business based upon. You know, it's so hard for people to know with stories because stories are so subjective, you yeah. know, and, they, and they've got to be authentic. They've got to come from the writer. Actually, 
I think I think the most progressive way you could possibly look at it is we're all individuals. You know, yeah. you can be you can be a member of a million different groups. There are certain groups that are actually really uh, culturally and societally important right now mm. um, for for good reason because historically historically there's been tremendous injustice. So 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 I understand that, but ultimately we're all individuals, and I I I just think it's I think to suggest that you know, your experience of the world is the same as Michael's experience of the world yeah. um, due to pigmentation. I don't think that makes sense, but there will be there will be huge cultural overlaps which should be enjoyed and should be celebrated. Mm -hmm. My stories are not the same as Boris Johnson's stories, ultimately, but we share the same pigment, you know? Mm -hmm. so, so that's one thing. I think that when you give a script to an executive, they're trying to understand that script because they want to um, forge a good idea about whether they're going to be able to sell that, whether they're going to be able to monetize it and keep working as an ent entity. Yeah. I've had a million people tell, that's obviously an exaggeration of about 10 people, <laughs> tell me that um, my script is similar to something else. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't looked at them with a critical lens to think, you know, what's the motivation behind this? But, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to ingest that feedback. Cause maybe I think, maybe I wrote a comedy and I didn't intend for it to be like The Office, but maybe that's what they're reading into it. Mm. Um, and maybe they're coming at it with their, with their certain lens. Um, I do I do think, if, if your question is, do I ever think that um, due to what should be an arbitrary factor, I've faced rejection. I think Mike made a really good point about uh, people with my pigmentation until 2016, uh, maybe that wasn't the case, but mm -hmm. you know, you can call it progress, you can call it improvement, you can mm -hmm. call it whatever you want to call it, positive discrimination. I think uh, as a society, we're feeling the pendulum shift. I feel like 10 years ago, if I'd, I mean, I wasn't working back then, but I think if I'd submitted a script to a public body like mm -hmm. the BFI, uh, mm -hmm. I think I would have been blindly naive to think that uh, the merit alone of the script would determine its success or failure, but the world is very political mm -hmm. and that's not, necessarily how I think these institutions operate mm. um, and so you know I know I know people um, who have stopped submitting to these public bodies because the public bodies are very open about the fact that they're looking for different stories now mm. and you know whether whether that's a good thing or a bad thing that's the point of conversations like these you yeah, know I, and like I, yeah, so you know what I mean go on off that go on off that um, do we think it's a good idea or a bad idea to um to for the BFI and for the BBC and for Channel 4 and for a lot of these production companies to be like, okay, we're going to focus on specific, specifically trying to build more BAME stories, more LGBTQ plus um, stories. We're gonna we're gonna try and do more stories that are out of out of the norm of I guess what we've been what we've been given for the last for the last hundred years. How, how do we feel about that? Do we feel like that is a positive or negative? Unless it looks like you go. Yeah, I just want to reset something very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, race isn't about pigmentation. It's literally about race. Race mm -hmm. is a construct that was put into place for the very reason of oppression. So it didn't happen by the by, it, it's strategized and it's been strategized over centuries because there are people who are of white skin who are not invited into whiteness. Mm. Um, so only recently have, for instance, you know, in recent decades, Irish people being invited into whiteness, Eastern European people being invited into whiteness, but they have white skin, but they were not allowed the benefits of whiteness um, and they only get allowed into it in order to uphold white supremacy. Mm. So with that being said, um, when we talk about it, we have to be very specific about what we are talking about. So if we're talking about diversity, diversity covers a range of things, um, whether it's we're talking about um, how people identify in terms of their sexuality, how they identify in terms of race or how they are being identified and minoritized on the basis of race and their sexuality mm. and thus marginalized. Um, that is what we're talking about when we're talking about diversity, allowing people in to a system that was trying very very hard to keep them out mm. and it's only due to profit that people are now being allowed in because mm. this structure needs to keep its relevance mm. and it wants to keep its money so um if you have certain places for instance like the bfi that they're currently saying okay well we want to see stories from other marginalized groups Yes, it's frustrating for somebody who, um, or, for, or for a group of people who may have reaped certain benefits, even if it's like, I haven't reaped it, people, other people reaped it because I'm only just starting my career now. Mm. 
that's frustrating, but the likelihood that there will be other institutions that are likely to give you money is possible. Mm. Um, whereas those groups that they're asking to submit, the likelihood of them getting money from other bodies mm. is nigh on impossible. Mm. So that that's kind of like where I feel like there's nuance and there's context and there's mm. texture to be explored. And um, a lot of the uh, these governing bodies or these institutions that are giving money as well, they're very facetious mm -hmm. and they're all liars and they're vagabonds as far as I'm concerned <laughs> because um, they'll say that, they'll give you the money, but they'll make you jump through so many hoops to get that money that yes. you almost don't want it at the end of the day. Yeah. And then you have to come and vouch for what you've created um, and they're putting up against a metric that it's insurmountable, it's, it's so unfair. Mm. So, you know, it goes beyond the grants, it goes beyond who gets the grants um, because there's so much more, mm. you know, that to me that's happening. But the first thing that I think that needs to be there as a foundational framework within the discussion is the fact that race goes beyond skin colour. It mm. is literally um, a structure that mm. was put in place for this very reason. So, okay, in 2016, we started seeing more black skinned people um, or, you know, people of different races, ethnicities participating in, you know, what we consume. However, have the stories adapted around them? No, the stories have remained the same. The narratives mm. have, re have remained the same. We're still forcing the same stereotypes. Mm. but we've just allowed these people to be on screen who gets to be the director of photography probably not a black person who gets to be a producer probably not a black person so the people still holding the purse strings still remain predominantly white but they're just allowing um as we we're talking about earlier um window dressing you just get to kind of be there but you have no real impact and the stories have not been molded around you behind her eyes i thought was atrocious because <laughs> the she, the protagonist yeah. is black mm. but she doesn't have any black friends mm. and yeah. she just keeps falling into these situations and there was no reference to her wig you yeah, know like yeah, so yeah, so yeah, many yeah, things yeah. were happening in that situation <laughs> that i thought was wild but we're meant to celebrate <laughs> that oh this is a netflix series mm. and this gorgeous actress talented actress got this role but nothing around that role but was was made space mm. for her do you mm. not do you not feel sometimes though that I, I share the same sentiment, and I feel I feel I feel a lot of the time whenever I am critiquing um, particular um, stories that are made that, that are that are diverse, mm -hmm. um, I feel like I'm, I'm I feel like I have quite a high bar, and I feel like a lot of the time. A lot of the stuff that we are making, like behind our eyes, we can get through the first. We can get through the first episode. Um, the first there's, a, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff, but then I feel as though when I do that, the community almost looks back at you. Um, this is if you identify within a community. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The community looks back at you and goes, "Hey, well, this is what we got. We need to we need to slowly climb." Because if you look at if you look at what we have here and you look at what's going on in America, we're not we're not we're not even. We're not even we're not even touching the surface. Yeah. Mm. But um, unfortunately, I feel like that conversation. I, even though I share your sentiment, I don't believe that many people actually believe that because I think most people are very happy well, because we are basing them. Sorry, one more mm -hmm. point. We are basing themselves in this individual mindset where I feel like a lot of people are kind of like, well, I'm making minds and I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to make because I don't necessarily think that pro projects can be considered diverse just because you put Daniel Kaluuya in it. Exactly. Because what that is saying is that Daniel Kaluuya is a is diverse. It's and Daniel Kaluuya has money, he's got clout, he's got something that people that people have already seen. He's got get out behind him. Do you understand what I'm saying? Before get out, that was five years of him just doing Black Mirror and nothing. Since get out, everything has everything has gone. But I feel like you can't put that on people like us that are coming up and working on projects because I don't feel like we we are we are in the um, my point is flailing, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I think it's really interesting to sort of, um, and this sort of goes on to my next question, but to figure out, again, I'm all for diversity of story because I think that that is really, really important. And story, as a writer, I believe in writing stories that come from the gut of my soul, yes. right? And I believe that, in, in my perfect world, everybody would have an equal playing field of being able to tell their story. Yes. Their, their, um, their experiences, how unique it is, what, yeah. how it's, it's affected them in a really unique way. And I, I, I almost know the answer to my question anyway, but mm. I, I guess I'm going to ask, like, Wait, can you, is it possible to represent all groups of people? 
but you're not trying to. I think that that's only put on marginalised communities, is my point. Mm. Because behind her eyes, as I because we're talking about black British, mm. how is it possible that she lives in London, does all of those things, and has not... She did not... See, she, didn't even, she didn't even have a black neighbour. that they, mm. they just said, you know what? We've met our diversity quota. Boot, black, she, yeah. done. Mm. And that was what was worrying. We should not mm. have the pressure of having to represent entire communities. I should be allowed to make a horrendous project, like mm. absolute shit. Yeah. And, and for people to be like, Kelechi made a shit project. Yeah. Mm. Wow, that was horrible. Mm. As opposed to, you know what? Collection made a shit project. All you blacks get out. Yeah. Like, and that's and yeah. that's and that's the thing. But I yeah. almost, but that's what I'm, I feel like I'm, the industry is. But yeah. I'm yeah. almost posing it not even to black British people. I feel like sure. to to the production companies, to yeah. the people at the top. Like, what what exactly is it that they want? Like, mm. can you represent? Because the notion is. Black doesn't sell. That mm. was the notion for mm. a very long time. Mm. We can't have this because we don't know if our, mm. you had that. Our audience, mm. Mm, they're not really going to like yes. this, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what that means is, you know, the white people in Middle England watching this, they're not mm. going to understand what you're saying, mm. sir. Will, and, someone, will, will Jack in Middlesbrough be able to connect with um, with a black with a black based story? Is a quote that I have from an email. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, basically. Like, um, is is it palatable to a white audience? Yeah. Um, but um, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna throw that to Emily um, because I do I do believe that we are in a space where I think we are in a space within 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 our community within our industry where people are like. Diversity is diversity is kind of the poster that you see where it's like you have a black person, you have a Chinese person, you have an Asian person, you have someone that's disabled, somebody that's got somebody that, that, that um some some type of se sexual orientation. It's like here is our poster. Can we? Re do you believe that that is a that is that is a goal? Is that something that we should be pushing towards, trying to represent everybody in an equal light? Well, the thing that came to mind immediately when you brought that up was it's a sin, mm. Mm. which is obviously about. You know, the, the story that's telling is about young gay men in the 80s mm. and the uh, AIDS pandemic. Yeah. Um, but I remember watching it and, like, the vast majority of my friends are queer. Yeah. And throughout the whole community. Mm. You know? And we were watching it and I had one of my friends who's a gay man say, I loved it. I thought it was great. I, I loved that it represented the story that it was telling. I love that we got different aspects of community. You know, yes, the uh, lead was a white man, but we had... Um, you know, the young story of uh, the young black guy who yes. was involved with a politician. Yep. Um, they had an older guy who was friends with them, which is a big thing. And they were like, oh, it's great. They're actually, we're getting a really diverse community. Mm. And then I had another friend turn and go, I think they've just ticked off every box. Yeah. They've gone, hmm, what are the five archetypes of gay? Lovely, well, each and every one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and guess what? The lead's still a white man. Yeah. Mm. And, and that's not to take away from that story, yeah. the importance of that story. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't, you know, and I can't, you know, I'm very with, I'm part of the community, but I'm not a gay man. Yeah. yeah. So that's not my story. That's not for me. Yeah. I can relate to aspects of it, but also as a woman, yeah. I'm sitting there going, the only fucking woman in this is his mum. <laughs> <laughs> or the friend who apparently lives to surf. Yeah. Who yeah. was a black woman yeah. as well, which I yeah. was there watching it going, why is the only fucking female in this got no personality other than mm. to... But that's my, I understand that I'm watching it from a very different perspective. Of yeah, of course. Um, and I'm kind of going... This is not my story to comment on, mm. on the AIDS crisis story. But if there was something like that for me, I'd rather go, I'd rather actually you hone in, do it well, mm. rather than just try and appease. Every and everybody, you know, really acclaimed it. And they were like, it's so wonderful, it's so incredible. To be honest with you, I, I like uh, Ross Davis as a writer, mm. but I was there like, I thought it was kind of boring. In places, and I go just because it's sad doesn't mean it's mm. like wonderful and fantastic. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's uh, but you can't really say it because people go they're like, oh my god, you don't think the AIDS crisis? And go, that's yeah. not what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I think I think that's something that I think I fall into a lot. I I tend to have unpopular opinions, and mm. I feel like when people in any community kind of band together and say this is you know uh, what we like, and then you're even whether you're in the community or not going. I don't think that that's right. Yeah. I think you get a lot of like, what? Yeah. How dare you? Yeah, and, yeah. And, and and I think, you know, I feel like that about Top Boy quite a lot mm. um, because... So this it. is the thing that's difficult because we had we had a massive back and forth about it. what constitutes a black race. And we were, get, we were getting heated, mm. right? Yeah, yeah. And I just... 
my, my, my viewpoint is I don't believe that you can fully call Top Boy a black British project mm -hmm. if it has been cultivated and created by a white Irish man but and just put Kano and, and everyone else. Because I think what it is, is, is exactly, yeah. it's exactly what you're saying. What, it looks amazing at the front. Mm -hmm. And I, and I don't, I don't want to like completely bash the project because I like it and mm -hmm. I watch it and I do enjoy it and I enjoy the storylines. But, um, and I know that there are some schemes that they're doing in there. I know they're doing like shadowing schemes. So like mm -hmm. you, um, you, you follow a director on your first season, then you get to direct an episode in your second season. I think all of that stuff is great. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know necessarily how earnest it is, but I think it sounds great. Mm -hmm. But overall, I don't know if you, I don't know if you if you if just because just because like I don't know Will Smith and, and um, Martin Lawrence are in or in Bad Boys doesn't mean that it's a black film. Do you know what I mean? Because it was written by um what's his name by a Transformer guy. My, um, um, Michael... Michael... Bay. Yeah, Michael Bay. Thank you. Yes, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Does it count? Do you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I yeah mean, that, was my, uh, that was my view. The thing is, I, I, I just want to sort of... It's hard and, and we didn't even come to a conclusion in the, yeah, at the end of the argument, yeah. but it was like... I'm in two minds, again, going, OK, do we celebrate those who now have roles? Do mm. we celebrate the opportunities that are being brought up? Mm. Or do we say... This is still written because I get the mm. argument where it's like this is still written by a white man. This is a story culture. This is not our voice. This is someone else saying, mm. "Yeah, okay, that works. Mm. That's them." Yeah, you know what I mean. And, and also, and also, like with the script, with this. Um, so yeah, he writes. He, he writes the script. Um, so he writes the script, and there is a um, he, he writes the script. He gives them to the he gives them to the cast, and everybody fills it with slang. Mm. And um, every, and it's like, okay, no, we wouldn't say this. We'll say that. Oh, we wouldn't say this. Say that. One of the biggest criticism this season has got was the slang was forcing it. There was so much. There was so much everywhere because I don't think that you can just trust actors to be like, oh, okay, here you go. Here's my here's my thing. Just fill it with everything that you can because then it sounds like we're in London. And I don't I don't think I don't think that that's earnest. I think that's just kind of like put your black stuff on it and then. And then, um, and then everybody will love where's, yeah, yeah, where's yeah. the black paintbrush? Yeah, here we go. There it is. <laughs> oh, it's wonderful now. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just... I think as well, I think there are, there are some TV shows, I think, that are doing it right. Okay. Mm. I mean, you can take so sex, sex education, yes. for yes. instance. Yeah, great, which great was example. created by Laurie Nunn, mm -hmm. a white woman from Australia. Mm. And what they did in the second season is they started bringing a lot more writers yeah. from different backgrounds. I've seen that writers' room. Yeah. You know, and like right with room the latest amazing. season, like my favorite episode was the one uh, where Eric went to Nigeria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. You know, and he explored mm -hmm. the whole queer scene out there. Mm. Yes. That was written by Temi Walker. Yeah, yeah. he was a black queer woman. Yes, yeah. yeah. and, and that was YouTube. why yeah. that that episode really resonated with me mm. because she, mm. you could tell she poured a lot uh -huh, of her own into experience it. Yeah. into it. And, and I think that's what I want to see more of. Yes. Mm. I think it's, sex education for me is, and I say it all, it's like the pinnacle of what I feel like representation should almost be. I feel like it's, mm. it's doing a really good job. And that is, and again, you always say like, we're not trying to take away white people from their, their post. Mm. We're just trying to be like, hey, you know, we exist. There mm. are there are great stories. Mm. You know, there are great nuances, and there mm. are all these different things that mm. we can actually mm. chime into and mm. deserve to be sort of on a platform. I believe. Mm. You know what I mean? Because we are practitioners. But and then we are also, creators. sex education is based in a school, mm -hmm. and a school is where you can see the most diverse groups of people that yeah. come from everywhere. You can have someone that, depending on where it is. Mm. But um, I think that in the certain school that they have, it is an opportunity to go. Let's let's put everybody in this, mm. and I think that that's a great example. I, I actually, I actually, we're just, just about to burst your bubble there mm. um <laughs> so um what are the two characters we've got eric and then the yeah. other black guy oh yeah so so jackson mm. and eric yeah why did jackson have contact lenses um, does he have contact lenses? No, why why his... did he have contact lenses in the thing? I thought his eyes were that no, colour. No, because oh, they were no. worried that the oh, audience no. would not be able to tell black people two black men apart. No. Yes. And so Again, That's no, <laughs> that can't be right. Wow. At the bush, that killed Keaton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Amazing. Yeah. What's the player called again? Um, something pitch. Red pitch. Red, Red pitch. pitch. Amazing player. I don't oh, think he's still around, no. but oh, I remember no. seeing him at play and be like, oh, you're from, why are your eyes different? <laughs> so I, like, oh, oh, no. I think they might have taken them out in this, you know, the most recent season, but they did that because they were worried that white audiences would not be able to tell two black mm. men apart that had clearly different, different. roles mm, right. and different that, faces. Yeah. faces yeah. Different. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah. then, you know, so I feel right. like mm -hmm. all the time we are worried about what the white audience will take away from something as opposed mm. to let's just 
put these, we're going to put two black actors in. Yeah. There you go, you figure yeah. it out. Yeah. Um, and they were worried that they wouldn't, so one person had to have something that they could reference and go, I'm no, so, he's I'm, got light I'm colored I'm actually, eyes. I'm, I'm taken aback by that. Like, yeah. I, I'm, I've stumbled. I'm it's overall, makes me, makes me overall, 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 I, I, <laughs> it's off my list. <laughs> <laughs> no, overall, I love it, I love it's it. Amazing. But yeah. I, do, I do feel yeah. like then, even when we are praising things, we still then look at it and be no, like, to, you've yeah. still got work to do, but in terms Absolutely. of the writing, mm. phenomenal. Mm. I mean, I, I, mean I, I love that episode, but I, I must say, the mother's accent was terrible. It was horrendous. It was actually, it really upset me, actually. You know, it just, it yeah. wasn't, it was, it was very, very. Funny. I just wanted, um, cause I was thinking about this when everyone was saying, when everyone was talking. Uh, I think when we talk about diversity, the conversation I'm more in interested in is the intention. Mm. As an artist, I know that my intention is to create art based on what I've been inspired by. Mm. And I think it's difficult to do it within an industry that focuses like business and making yeah. money and, and you know what I mean and, mm -hmm. and staying relevant. Mm -hmm. And I think if that's your intention, then you're gonna look at a black story or a gay story through a warped lens. Cause you know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's an, in my opinion, in a weird way, it's like another form of like, you're like, it's like another form of colonization. Like if I go to another country mm -hmm. and, I, and I meet a bunch of people that I don't know anything about, mm -hmm. my intention is to, to immerse myself in the culture, learn about the culture, that's what I'm saying, mm. as opposed to take from the culture. Mm. Right. And I think what we, when we're talking about tip boxes being ticked, mm. the boxes are being ticked with an intention that, you know what I mean, isn't about celebrating the, the, the you know what I mean? The people, mm. The yeah. people that, are, that, that see themselves as part of a, a group. Mm. The intention is off. And I think that's what I'm, when I look at certain things, I'm like, this is off. Yeah. I, I know it's off because I'm like, ah, oh, this isn't really about what they're saying it's about. Mm. Yeah. It's, the intention is about something else. Yeah. 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 Emily. This, is, this may be going too far, just start talking about theatre. Mm. Mm. But I mean, there's a, there's a play um, that recently worked on, actually, and the original cast, um, white writer, she put the French, she went, it, um, it's set in 1759 Norfolk, and in the beginning of the play, she says, the cast should not look like 1759 Norfolk, it should be diverse. Now, it's not a black story by any stretch of the imagination, at all. And the way it was, it was originally on at the National, and it had a, I believe, a white male director. And obviously, we know, all know who the artistic director at the National is as well. Mm -hmm. and, and I look at something like that and I go, has she done that to tick a box? Mm. Very possibly. And so again, at the National. Now, in this particular script, it's about, it's about, it's a, it's a story about women. Mm. And I go... Now, if you had a black director and a black um, producer and a cast that was predominantly black, could it be a black story? I don't know. I'm not the person to answer that. Mm. Um, but there was, we, when we got the plays that we were doing, one of the guys in our year, who's black, didn't read the script. We were all told we had to read all of them. Mm -hmm. And he didn't read it because he went, I'm not going to be casting it. Yeah. And he wasn't, to be fair. Yeah. He wasn't casting it. Yeah. But then, you know, he's had that assumption because he's got this a period piece. Um, and absolutely yeah. I'm not going to be now the cast at the National was I'm going to say quite diverse quite diverse for theatre mm. you yeah. know that's, that's yeah. that said any the cast should be representative of all of one you know yeah. what I mean as opposed to like something like Barbershop Chronicles yeah. which is a cast of entirely black men yeah um, so you know we go oh that's lovely and I you know I love yeah. this play I think it's in terms right. of the writing it's the writing's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. But then I, I've always had a kind of a weird feeling when I cracked open the play. She went, yeah. it can be anyone. I'm going, okay, but that's so, that kind of feels like then you're putting the responsibility on everybody mm. else mm. to go, they're like, I've done this. And now if you don't make it diverse, yeah. that's your fault. You're yeah. the villains in this. Because yeah. I've said it can be. Can I yeah. jump in really quickly? I, I, just want, I just wanted to hear yeah, a little yeah. bit from Chris and Yaz. Um, from talking about boxes as a di as a director and also as an actress how 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 does how does this diversity conversation affect you guys because i was just talking about the the what emily was just talking about this idea of like being being given being in these spaces where it's like oh we've got all of these roles and you just go i'm, I'm not going to go for that do you do you have anything you you're like this is particularly um, um these are things that i just stay away from because i know that there's no point or does your agent go we don't we don't look over here how, how do you find that how do you find that experience and chris when it comes to like when it comes to like actually creating the content itself how how do you how what how does your mind work when you start making making your pro projects do you base them on yourself do you base them on what happens and what happens outside of the world i just kind of want to hear we'll from do. you guys and then we can we'll, jump in from you we'll and, do yaz and then chris yeah. 
Um, yeah, I think whenever I do a project and I get sent a diversity email, I just delete it straight away. <laughs> 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 I'm, do, I'm not doing that. But, um, but yeah, no, in terms of like looking for jobs, uh, I've already discussed with my agent, which is really great that he brought up with me as well. It shows mm. he actually like cares about that stuff. Um, but yeah, he, uh, I, we always have a discussion being like, when you get the roles, obviously they say what kind of person they want. Mm. Um, and it will say either like mixed race, or any appearance. Mm. I've discussed this with you guys before. Yeah. And I always think whenever they say any appearance, it always means that they're open it they're opening it to any appearance, but mm. they will always default to a white person usually. Mm. Like if it's like a main character or something. Mm. And then like something that's like the lesser character or the friend will be like they'll like randomly be like Indian girl, but then there'll be nothing about <laughs> her. Then, yeah, but yeah, but then there'll be nothing about her being Indian or her culture in the actual story mm. when you read it. It will mm. just be like, and you're just like, well, why the why the fuck is that there? You could just have any appearance for ev- all of it, mm. and then see where it goes with the actors yeah. that you find. Yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah, that's always, and it is a it's a thing again. What we were talking about with writing as well, yeah. like um, when you do start to get paranoid, you're just like, okay, um, is it just because they didn't want me, or is it just because? I'm not white or, or if I don't fit yeah. into that and like it's obviously different because I'm lighter skinned but then also you do have the kind of thing where like you can fit into different types of ethnicity right. mm. yeah. um, which can obviously be a blessing in a lot of ways yeah. but then obviously you're not white enough you're not dark enough to play that role or whatever so it does yeah. kind of like that's when diversity kind of I had the word really great on me yeah, as well yeah yeah yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, yeah, um, yeah yeah and I get it and like what what everyone was saying before about like I, I kind of see it in the same way as like activism when it comes to like talking about how to deal with the this industry. It's like do you go you have two types of activism. You have activism where you kind of play play within the <laughs> system mm-hmm. and you try and make it better and you try and work your way up or you have activism where you can go really radical and you want to break down the whole system and just start again. Mm-hmm. And I get I get that in terms of like, you know, people who are just like you work with white directors and white producers mm-hmm. or you just kind of like fuck that and be like I only want to work with the people I want to work with, mm. with the projects I want to make, mm. rather than having to cater to that white audience, having to cater to that. But it's obviously that's so much easier said than done. Because yeah. it's like when you're a nobody, it's like what you're saying, when you're a big star and you've made it, you can be like, fuck this. And like, yeah, 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 I'm yeah. doing this, whatever. But then when you're a nobody, you just won't get the chance to be in yeah, that situation. Yeah, because you don't have the and, and, you, and you remain a non- nobody for the majority of your career. Yeah, exactly. Really? Because you yeah. get... Because you climb, you climb, you climb, you climb, and then yeah. you become... I'm going to say he's Will Smith. And all you become, you become like Zoe Kravitz. Somebody wants or, to be Will Smith. <laughs> <laughs> really bad. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 I'm um, um, yeah, no, no, genuinely. Um, it, it does, it is like a thing where it's like, it's the latter half of your career. It's like now that even, um, it's now that you kind of see that like, oh, Kevin Hart can produce movies. And, yeah. and all this kind of mm. stuff. And Tyler Perry has just bought a lot, even though we were watching Color, we were watching um, Why get For Color Girls to... back in the day. Oh. Do you know what I mean? Like that was, that was it. But um, yeah. yes, um, <laughs> something that uh, has been said where like when you see the role could be open to anyone mm. but you know that they have a white prefix in mind mm. I thought that was interesting because when I was casting for my film I said any and I genuinely meant any like, mm. I was judging purely the performance and the mm. quality of the acting yeah. so I think that was like quite I've never like considered that uh, perspective before can I, can I ask a quick question um, who were the main who were your main cast members? What were their ethnicities? Oh, uh, Filipino mm-hmm. uh, female. Her name's Julia Sobia. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's actually running for Miss Philippines. Oh, okay, girl. Yeah, yeah that's the year we're in. Good luck to her, man. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, uh, and yeah, I think. I mean, I don't think there were many white people in the yeah in the film. There was one where the, the teacher. Yeah. Uh, but that's because the previous actor fell out. I shouldn't say this. <laughs> Pete, no, Pete you're my first choice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's what we'll, yeah. Uh, Actually, it was Pete who, who put me onto the show as well. So. Oh, no. So, oh, shout out to Pete, man. Shout yeah. out to Pete wherever you are, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, what was the question again? Sorry. Just your, your, your experience as a, as, a, as a director. So, obviously writing the script, directing the script, and I know that you I know that you've gotten to the point where you have your you have a feature film and you're now going through the indie route, which is already ho- horrendous for whoever wants to go through, like compared to compared to being backed by a studio. How how has has diversity affected you in any way? Have you found more freedom than the fact that it's been that you've been working in in, in an indie space or I am just quite I interested think in there, there's a lot more freedom working within the indie space mm. and I, I my uh 
my two cents would be like if you're truly and genuinely passionate about the story mm. like just make it in terms of you don't have to have 30k to make a short film mm. you just need to find someone with a camera mm. and find opportunities that arise mm. uh, and I think from that point onwards and this is my optimistic thinking the merits of the work itself will carry you forward mm. uh, obviously that as we established it's not always the the case there's mm. a lot of politics that goes behind I think uh, I forgot you. I'm ben. sorry Ben uh, what you were saying with like how producers look at stories through a completely different lens from how we look at things mm. they look at it for the money mm. Mon money is all they care about film is completely a business and especially mm. when you take it within the context of British within the British film industry which is you know a complete shell and husk of what, what it once was mm. it, the British film industry doesn't actually exist as, as far as I feel mm. it's been bought out by American uh, companies mm. in the 60s uh, Britain had the opportunity to be become the Hollywood of, of the world and uh, the owners of Odeon Cinema and all of these cinemas sold the rights to American companies and to Hollywood mm -hmm. and who owns the cinemas gets to depict what films play mm. and that's a big thing mm. and like money is is really like it's the key is the key to it like mm. if yeah. and I, I think if we were to take it, if we were to focus on like black stories and black casting per se, mm -hmm. uh, it's a well-known fact. I can't remember the statistic. I want to say sixty percent of like uh, casting goes towards like films that are about slavery or civil rights, mm -hmm. and in Britain it'd be more towards gangs and you know the top boy sort of genre. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think. That's like I think that's crazy. Like that that like sort of pigeonhole mm. of of uh, casting. I think. Yeah, I think what you were saying earlier with diverse stories mm. is the key, and yeah. I, I I stand by that. Mm. I think, getting really diverse stories. Where the, where the like, the ethnic Peter Greenway films. Where the the ethnic Bergman films. Mm. They're not founded yet, mm. and, and that is something that I'm really looking for yeah. Uh, yeah. from going on to the future. Yeah. That's, that's a very interesting point because um, I, I don't believe that Ooh. my projects are diverse. Yep. I, I, I hate it, hate it, completely hate it. I hate everything that it stands for because what it, sta what it creates is this space, as a black writer and director, um, what, it, what it creates is it creates a pigeonhole on every single character that I ever make, a pigeonhole on any narrative that I ever want to make. And what I get taught, what, what you do is you kind of, you have these conversations with people and they go, oh man, this, this, is, this, is, so, this is so diverse and it's so amazing. And I'm, I'm going, well, are you just kind of looking at like, are you kind of counting the names and going, okay, cool. Um, Oh, childhood trauma. Oh, yeah, that, that's something that's been on the internet. Oh, okay. Um, oh, oh, colorism. Yes, that's, that's something that's on been on Instagram. The, yeah, that's on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, and we put it all together. And I, and like, I, I mean, I mean, I became a writer and director because I wanted to be a writer and director. Do mm. you understand what I'm saying? Mm. And I wanted to write based on who I am, which is Michael. And I wanted to, and I write for my community. Mm. And I, and every person in the in the lead of my projects that I've been writing are all black people. Do you know, what I, I find people. sorry. I'm just, oh, no, I find that interesting. Um, and I agree. Mm. It's just I feel I don't. I got to that point where I was sort of like I don't even feel like I'm writing for my community uh. anymore because again we have that conversation of being rejected by your own community and stuff like that. Mm. But I I I write stories based on my perspective and yeah. my own experiences. And I go if every single person here was to write a script, it would be a complete different script. Even though there are how many black people, how many women how many men, do you know what mm. I mean? It's, there will be different stories. And I feel like, again, the equal playing field, the thing is the thing is what I'm sort of harping on about, because I feel like if everyone has the opportunity to write something good and get it, but it, like equally put on without all the money talk and all that kind of stuff, then I feel like we would be in a better place. But again, like I agree with you, right? It's like my job isn't to want to represent everyone mm. because well, I, my, my job is to, 
be true to my story and my, my authenticity and like yeah. what I felt and saw and, yeah. and understand about the world, if that we, makes sense. We always, we always say that we spent the majority of our childhoods watching practically white projects with a sprinkle of black ones. So you had like your Fresh Prince of Bel Airs, your My Wife and Kids. Like, American, and, American and, 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 they're, and they're all American. Like, do you know what I mean? I, 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 Desmond's is before my time. And like, um, so I, there wasn't, there wasn't really. And it's still and, like, like hail today, Desmond's. Yeah. I don't understand. Yeah, like, people yeah, like, like, oh, the diverse <laughs> black <laughs> project, it's like the Desmond's. Yeah. It's like. And, and like, and, and like, if you're gonna, if you're gonna talk to me about like, when we were kids, when we were kids, you have like, um, Ka-Ching and like, um, yeah. and, and, and um, oh, Ka-Ching and then, um, and Tracy Beaker. Like that was, that was the stuff that we had. And even with that, it's very very small um yeah no it's so i think that when you when you grow up like loving one tree hill and loving friends and loving spielberg movies and going i want to do that as michael you your brain if if we if outside of a system of oppression your brain goes man i'm gonna i'm gonna go and do this but as soon as you step into it and you start going hey um I've written a, I've written a, I've written a horror or I've written a science fiction. People go, oh well, how's this going to work within our standards? And this is bringing us to the question that I want to ask: is I personally believe that our, that our, that our industry is rooted in racism and white supremacy. Um, and um, I just wanted to see if you agree, if you don't agree. I believe, I believe that the reason why we aren't going anywhere is because I believe that we are, the country that we live in is founded on white supremacist ideals. And I don't think that we're ever going to go further in a way that we're going to see something that's actually going to be like um, the diversity and the utopia that we, all want, that we all want is because there's always going to be somebody that's going to be at the top going, we need to keep the system of oppression here so that I can keep my wealth, I can keep my status and I can keep pushing out the same old shit. Um, I want to open that up to the room. Uh... That's my bag. Um, <laughs> racism and white supremacy are my favourite subject. Me too. Um, it's gorgeous, it's gorgeous. Uh, Britain wouldn't be great without it. Like oh, that's, that's what the great is for Britain. And that's why... Um, Listening to everyone talking, I thought the main thing I kept hearing was power. People weren't mm. using the term. Someone mm. would say politics or someone would say money or someone would say something else. But what we're talking about is power. Mm. And when you um, do not have the power to tell your own stories, that is part of um, the violence. Yep. Mm. Um, when you are told that it's okay for um, a white Irish man to just say, oh, I want some jerk chicken, but the guys are meant to be Nigerian. It, you know, like there's certain things that just get lost, mm. um, but it's, he can tell the story, he can get the funding because he, he has that power mm. and they will keep giving him that power and people like him. And so I, there's so many things that are happening there. And of course, yeah, it won't change because a supremacist structure, regardless of whether we're talking about a white supremacist structure mm. or otherwise, doesn't willingly give over mm. power. Of course. And so, um, Earlier it was mentioned, like, do we go, in terms of activism, do we go the subversive route, enter the institution and try to change it from within, or do we go the radical, quote-unquote radical route, and then dismantle the whole thing and put something new in its place? Mm. I think that when we commit ourselves to false binaries, we don't go anywhere. I don't think that we have to, we could be doing both at the same time mm. because the mm. danger of only waiting for a subversive way of doing things like, guys, I'm going to enter into that. I'm going to change it and I'm going to come back. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's what they we don't come back. Because <laughs> <laughs> everybody's in America. <laughs> Hello. You said you were coming back. Yeah. You said you were coming back for me. Uh, what, what's happened? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, just, there's a lot of politics here, but I'll let you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so <laughs> you, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, we bring in the boat, don't worry. We bring in it. And, and, yeah. and so you get, you get gatekeepers who look like you, oh, but no. they have, oh, but they've internalized. They've internalized a lot of the narratives as to yeah. why you cannot mm -hmm. join them wow, with right. a seat at the table. Mm. So because when they we, are a part of the table. Because yeah. now, yeah. now they're a part of the table, even yeah. though they're eating a crumb and they've only got three legs on their chair, they <laughs> are, will be wobbly and they will stay there. Um, mm. So it makes life very, very difficult for mm. you because you're. You then have to basically ask yourself, like, what am I going in there to do? What do I? What do we? want from these spaces mm. do we want fame do we want acclaim or do mm. we want to make good work because yeah. if we want to make good work it's not necessary that we are actually in yeah. there mm. um but if we want fame and acclaim then mm. yeah that's where that's where yeah. that's where you've got to be but um also we have to be honest with ourselves when we go like 
I don't want to represent my community. I want to make stories for me. Have we done enough rigorous self-interrogation mm. to know that the stories that we are in fact making are not also caricatures mm. and they're not also laden with internalized um, anti-blackness or internalized yeah. um, oppressive dynamics that we've taken in and absorbed 100%. because it's a trauma response from existing in the mm. society, whether it's about mm. misogyny or whether it's about race or whether it's about racialized misogyny, mm. um, um, you know, a bigotry across the board, we have to ask ourselves those questions because I don't think we're asking enough. So somebody gets a budget, finally, they make something and you're like, what the fuck? Yeah. And they'll turn around and go, but I made it for me. I wasn't thinking about you. Yeah. But you are impacting me by yeah. what you have made mm. because I am a re I'm going to be seen as the reflection of mm. that. I but why I think that Michaela Cole, for instance, what I think that she did do well was um, to not go with Netflix do that whole partnership thing with the BBC and yeah. whoever else she was working with in America. Yeah. Do that. And again, see, she had to get an American um, company to help her as well yeah. because otherwise <laughs> the thing wouldn't, it wouldn't have slapped the way that it did. Yeah. Um, and so they let her do that. But then somebody wrote a review on it. And I remember during 2020 and they, was it 2021 and they said something like, I was surprised just the humanness of the characters. Um, if yeah. you take away the blackness, they are human. I said, what? So yeah, the yeah, whole yeah. time you thought black people weren't yeah. human, but yeah, you know, yeah, this right. was a very, very real yeah. review from a white female journalist. Yeah. And so again, we're not just talking about, oh, let, we let women make films because then we get comments like what Jane Campion made mm. where, you know, there's so many things that I feel okay. like need to be, um, like just that need to be considered. But, mm. Um, I say all of that to say, for ages, I would be waiting. We'd say that, oh, that I don't know if someone's going to buy my things. On Saturday, yeah. I had the live show of my podcast, yeah. um, chose the venue. I was like, okay, it can see over, I think it was 500 and something people. Um, me as one person independently, I was like, I, 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 will, I will choose that venue and yeah. let's see how it goes. And it sold out in under an yeah. hour. Yeah. Wow. Um, and then when I actually did the show on Saturday, all of these hundreds of people there, for me, yeah. let me know that if I put out a film, no matter how small, I, I know that 500, 500, people, right, 500 right. people are gonna watch it, yeah. you know? Yeah, and, and those were only the people that happened to be online in time to buy mm. the ticket for the show. Yeah. So I say that because I know that we all have people. Mm. And so be honest with yourself. Do you want the fame and the claim or do you just wanna make good things? Because if you wanna yeah. make good things, you don't have to wait. Yeah. And, and we can work laterally mm. and figure things out, skill swap, all of that stuff and mm. you 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 really have to go for it mm. but um because oftentimes going with the fame and the claim you are whether you want to admit it or not going to end up being complicit in upholding white supremacy mm. of course of course yeah of course yeah of course um I Amazing think, point. I, think I, I, I wanted to I, I saw I saw Yaz moving I saw Tom moving I just wanted to get some yeah. add um, some more onto it no mine was just a really short point and I've kind of forgotten it but um, <laughs> <laughs> no just exactly what you were saying I completely agree and also it was interesting hearing you talk about like diversity as well because you're right exactly about gatekeepers it's like mm. is, isn't diversity just a word that like white cis like straight people have used to then be like oh actually shit we need to yeah. for whatever reason it is power yeah. money they, they're just like okay we're now allowing other people in yeah. mm. so it annoys me as well that yeah. this word is still being used and like you're panicking about it being like you're wondering about your own work but yeah. really it's not something that should be put on you yeah. and it's yeah. actually just something that's come about like last, 10 years ago that would have been a woke thing to say or whatever but yeah. now it's just something that you hear and it's just yeah. it's well, just a joke yeah. we, were, we, we were actually saying we were actually saying um, yesterday that it was really funny because um we remember when we kind of had our woke moment when woke was a something within the community before yes. it kind of became co-opted and now mm -hmm. turned into something about, like right-wing pundit shoes yeah. um woke was this thing where it was like where it was like you listen to your erica Badu, mm. you put coconut mm. skin and you, you yeah, put yeah, coconut yeah. oil but in your skin you listen, yeah, yeah. yeah. james baldwin is like it's like uh, always in your uh, ear and you're yeah. like and everyone's like yeah you're right sister you're i was right, i was What's radical king? <laughs> yeah, yeah that was it was a thing and and yeah. and, wor and words have power and words do get co-opted constantly and things constantly change and who has created the term of diversity um, is, I think, it's an important point. Let's move to Tom. I thought you were going in. I thought you were going in. No, no, no. What, no, no, no. What, um, I was going to say about yeah, gatekeepers as well, because I think, you know, you, you mentioned like Michaela Cole, who mm -hmm. we all love, mm -hmm. but like how many other Michaela Coles can we like, mention, like name? I'm, I'm trying to and do it. Exactly. And I do feel there's very much this unspoken rule of like, there can only be one, mm. yeah. you know, like one gets through. And it's amazing what she did because she was a writer, director, you know, like mm. it was very much her creative vision. Like I may destroy you, yeah. but there aren't 
there aren't a, like a lot of black creatives in that position mm. who have that kind of power. Yeah. You know, and I'm tired of seeing like just one black person being put on that pedestal. Yeah. Mm. And, you know, I'm not shining a light on other ones or opening the door for oh, others to yeah, come yeah, through. Yeah, mm. yeah. Completely agree. I know, I know Benny's been holding for... I'm folding, man. Folding, <laughs> folding, 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 folding. I don't know where to Benny start. Lineman. I don't know where to start. It might be a like, word vomit. Um, in terms of power, I'm starting to realise that the challenge reveals the power within yourself. It's kind of like a game. When I'm playing Mario and there's this freaking whatever just trying to kill me, yeah. once I beat that level, I realise my power. The, the more, more into the game I go, the more and more I realise how powerful I am. Mm-hmm. So I, I've basically what I'm starting to do is I'm changing my perspective on this system that is rooted in white supremacy and racism mm. as this thing that is against me and it's like, oh, woe is me. Mm. It's kind of like, all right. And this idea that my, a good friend of mine, mentor, shout out Mikel, um, said to me about, I said to you earlier about, start where you are, use what you have, do what you can. Mm. Like that really kind of just gave me something about like, I'm not, I'm not putting all my energy into trying to make these people that clearly know nothing about, do you know what I mean, my culture, mm. or don't have, do you know what I mean, like the wherewithal to actually, if they were gonna help me do my thing, it would only be about some monetary nonsense. Mm. Like, I'm not putting my energy into trying to appease them anymore. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, and this is the thing about diversity and why I hate words like diversity and BAME and all these, it's like, mm. like, yeah. it's not a tribe Bame. that my people have created that I'm a part of. Yeah. It's, Something that they have created yeah. to try and understand me. Mm. Bun, what you're, you're, I don't care about you trying to understand me anymore. Mm. Like, let me work with the people that I actually see as part of my tribe. It's like, mm. and when I think about like identity and all these things, like, it's really deep when you think about it. Because I know my name right now, Benjamin Top and Brony. My parents named me, my brother, and my sister with English names because mm. they were like, oh, we want our children to have jobs. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It's like. It's, it's weird, like, it's, it's really deep rooted what we do with identity and, mm. do you know what I mean, within ourselves. Yeah. And then when you see it outside of us, it's like, this is nonsense, I'm not a part of this. Yeah, mm. yeah. So what I'm, what I'm more concerned with is working on my, do you know what I mean, working on the nonsense that I've, do you know what I mean, probably like, yeah, yeah. got within me and I'm trying to like, do you know what I mean, yeah. but really and truly, yeah, if that. I work that stuff out, really and truly I'll realise that working in this kind of way mm. with people that I, I know are part of my tribe, mm. do you know what I mean? Um, is the way that I'll be able to make the art that I'm passionate about making. Yeah. It's not a, yeah, we all need money. That's a fact. So do what you got to do. Mm-hmm. But buy money at the same time. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I'm, trying, I'm like, trying to make, yeah. so, do you know what I mean? I'm trying to make something that, that my children's children's children can be inspired by. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Like, Amen. like let's, let's make memories. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And, and it's not going to be coming from, do you know what I mean? Mm. Trying to appease this man that works at freaking wherever. I'm not going to name a place because slightly hire me. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, slightly yeah. give me work. We got but, scripts. We got scripts. I mean? I got work, we but got at scripts. the same time, like, yeah. yo, like, what are we, as artists, we have such a powerful job. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? We've got such a powerful responsibility to take on. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, like Nina, Nina Simone said, to reflect the times. Exactly. Yeah. So, do you know what I mean? That's what I'm on. Yeah. What do you Love think it. about, like, can you then blame people who do just give up and then do it for the money and the power rather than when they had the intentions to begin with to start out just doing it as like their own thing, their own project, what they believed in, and then end up going to, like, what we say on the other side and, like, yeah, just yeah, kind yeah. of... I don't know, give yeah. up your morals a little bit. I get it. There's a lot of actors when I was like coming up and stuff, and I'm still coming up, but like being within in and around the acting community for a long time, I've seen a lot of black actors go to America. I can't be like, yo, what are you doing? You know what I mean? Yeah. I understand why it makes sense because they're telling stories in America that reflect, even though I've never been to America in my life, it yeah. seems like they're telling stories right. that reflect, do you know what I mean? Who mm, I think I am and yeah. so on and so forth. So I can't yeah. be mad at that, but at yeah. the same time, it's like the idea of like, yo, come back. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like I'm, I know my passion is about telling the world. Mm. You know what I mean, mm. in the stories of the world I, I live in. Yeah, exactly. yeah. So, I, I can't lie. America looks good. America looks nice. Yeah, yeah. Cool. it looks nice. Yeah, exactly. And, it, and yeah. especially, yeah. Playing the system especially, well. like, yeah. And especially, it's yeah. about belonging, isn't it? Mm. And if you can make it there, you can't. I don't know. Especially based on like, especially based on like the stuff that I write. When it gets pitched to, so we, so um, um, me, Amelda, and Jace have the same agent, who's amazing. Shout out to Christina, she's phenomenal. Um, whenever, whenever I'm putting stuff out, which we will, there will be, 
there will be like a production company kind of meeting that you'll have on a weekly basis. And one of the one of the like through lines throughout all these conversations, let's say I've had like maybe like twelve in in the year or whatever, um, every single one has been like, your stuff is very like American. It's very and that's really frustrating because you go, but they're all British. Mm. They're all British. Yeah, but uh, it's yeah. like but because like but because like young seven year old Michael was watching Spielberg movies mm. and was watching Friends, mm. it's like it it comes out into your work because mm. when there was nothing here, it was almost it's like, well, I don't actually, I don't actually have anything to go off. Yeah. So I'm taking what I've seen and what I've what I've enjoyed and like make like I loved Super Bad or Harold and Kumar went to White Castle, crazy weed film. And I go, oh, that'd be so good to do here. And you do it, and they go, this is such an American thing. And it's like, well, I want to base it here, but there's nothing for it here. So you have like this push and pull of like, do I go to America? Where I can make these projects and mm. I can be seen, or but I really want to build. I really, it's, it's back to that power thing where it's like, well, that's just that's just for me. That's just for me as me. But I really want to build something here like what like what Tyler Perry, Will Packer, um, Oprah, all these people have where it's like they have a hub where now you can go to Oprah and be like, let's make a movie together. You yeah. can go to Denzel yeah, yeah, yeah. Washington and be like, let's make a movie. Yeah. Will Smith, Will Smith and, and his production company, there's so many people that you're like, oh, I can... I, I can make this, and yeah. so it's it's a difficult one. But I don't I don't I don't think it there should. I think I think I think following Kalechi's point and everything that you're saying about going over there, I think I think it's completely valid. But I do think that I do think that when you're in when you're in a drought and there's, and there's nothing, I understand why everyone goes yeah, over. Because look at Daniel Yeah, career. but I didn't reference America. My I mean, yeah. issue isn't with America. I was very specific about my issue being with institutions. Everybody mm. go where you're celebrated, fam. Mm. I might be gone in a couple of months. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not telling anyone. I'm, I'm going yeah, yeah. where I'm celebrated because yeah. I know I've right. capped. Right. When it comes to the UK, I know I've capped in terms mm. of right. what I can do in terms of impact and influence. Yeah. Yet it's the Americans that yeah. stay in my emails, that stay having yeah. meetings with me weekly. Oh. And they're like, if you come over here, yeah. you can release a collection, you publish a pamphlet, like mm -hmm. you, it, just anything, like mm. publishers, um, agents. I, I know that I've reached where I can in this country because mm. anything other than this mm. would require me to go mainstream. Mm. And you don't want me on mainstream TV because I'm going to say things. Back so, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so then, well, headline, 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 headline. Will has got right. nothing on me. So, like, <laughs> let, 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 so let, let's just, so I, so I get, so I get that. Mm. Another thing that we need to take into account when we're talking about the UK is class. Mm. Class yeah. is one of the, you know, the yeah. most stifling things. So yeah. it's not just, that's why I was specific about saying institutions as opposed mm. to our locations. Yeah. And I have empathy for people like, we have bills to pay, money have to make, right. like go mm. where you need to go. Right. But just remember that as you are there, maybe have a time mark because the more you're, the, the longer you're there, mm. yeah. the more you become complicit in this system and then mm. to extricate yourself from that system later on mm. becomes really, really difficult mm. because the people that you want to kind of be like, look, I'm out now and I want to help you do your thing. They're like, no, I don't trust you because mm -hmm. you did that thing. Mm -hmm. So maybe there needs to be a kind of SOS that lets them know that I'm just... Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, what's, yeah, this, yeah. What's, this, what's, this, what's this, like, I think that ever, ever, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing a lot of, there's this group of villainous baddies somewhere around a table, but like the more I listen, I can't, I can't picture who they are anymore. And I think, I think who they are, are the most powerful people in society. And I think that you get to those positions in a lot of different ways. I think it's really, it's really, it's really, really interesting. Obviously, um, I'm fascinated by what you're saying, by what you're saying, by what you're saying, because like all we carry with us are our perspectives in life mm -hmm. and, and all you can hope for is you exist in a time and a place where as many of those are allowed to flourish as possible. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if that is our goal, then that's fucking diverse, mm -hmm. right? That's diversity. What I, what I don't get is that there's this, there's this, firstly, firstly, we're, we're living right now uh, in a system that I agree with you is, is corrupt and needs so much improving, but it is, it is one of the freest, uh, societies that has ever existed on planet Earth, people, people everywhere are getting are getting richer all the time. People who were never able previously to tell their stories now have the internet. You were telling me about your web series, bro. I don't think that could have got made twenty years ago, but you got to make it now, and then it got it got it got put on TV. And 
It's just when people talk about the top 1%, it's crazy. I read this book by George Orwell called The Road to Wigan Pier. The thing that blew my mind about this book is what George Orwell did, genius in my opinion, maybe you like him, maybe you don't. He went, he went and spent a bit of time living with the coal miners in North, London, in, uh, North England, the mm. north of England. Rough place, rough job. You get up at the crack of dawn, then you crawl on your hands and knees for maybe two miles in the dark, breathing in coal dust to get to the coal face. You then do a 10 hour shift. Now this wasn't only men, this was women. He talked about pregnant women having to do these kind of jobs. Mm. Then he comes back, he comes back down to our capital, to the south and starts speaking to the, the socialist workers party, the socialist thinking, these, these are the people that are gonna be standing up for, for the working class mm. up, in, up, in, uh, up in the north. And what he concluded in this book, which I think is absolutely fascinating, I'm, 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 it, it really consumes me when I, when I hear conversations like this is, so many of the people that are dancing to the tune of this ideology don't love the poor, they just hate the rich. Now that's fucking fascinating, right? Because we talk about the one, top 1%, who's the top 1%? We can all sit here and go, well, it's Elon Musk, it's Jeff Bezos, it's, um, it's Mark Zuckerberg. No, it's not. To be in the top 1% globally, you've got to earn more than $35,000 a year. If you earn more than $35,000 a year, you are in the top 1% globally. But the problem is, we don't want to be in the top 1% because we're actually still at the bottom. We like to be at the bottom, right? We like to be like, they're so bad up there. They're so, and, and I'm even hearing in this conversation, it's like, what is, what is it about? It's about diversity. Well, I'm hearing, well, then people get up there and then they're not down here with me and it's, and it's bad for them. But there is a shitload of people below. It's talking, so, it's I so. That and I think that you're talking from an emotive place. And I think that this is what happens when people don't really have the tools to talk about systemic and institutional oppression. They go to a place of emotion. I'm talking to you from a place of logic at no point were you told that there's a top one percent there and they're villainous i talked to you about institutions and structures so i didn't give you yeah. i did not give you people i gave you institutions and structures because people die ideologies and movements and structures do not and, and so and so and so and so people, people exactly and so people are born into their social stratas mm -hmm. and that they stay within yeah. and without realizing it they are socialized through the education system through everything to uphold that specific thing mm -hmm. so it is ridiculous and in some ways infantile to be like, okay, now what we need to do is find a specific body. I don't mention people. Well, I talk about I talk about structures. Yeah. Mm. So this 1%, that's none of my business. Mm. And also when we talk about this being the freest country, in all, with all due respect, you can say that as a white man, that is the freest place. And then what you said was, it's the freest country because more than ever, we've been able to make more money than before. So therefore you've linked freedom with capitalism. Mm. And mm. when we look at capitalism and we look at the womb of the black woman, we would not have capitalism if it was not for the way that black women were raped and how Africa was pillaged in mm. order for us to have what we know as capitalism in this totally day right. and age. So I think that we have to be respectful and, and, and take our emotions out of it and focus on the fact that this is about systems and structures that benefit specific groups of people mm. and not others. Yes. And the whole reason, the foundation that was set from that was literally because black women were raped. That's mm. why we were able to have the industrial revolution because mm. black women were raped and they created the workforce that then allowed for sugar and everything to come yeah, over yeah, here yeah. and for all of those things to happen. Mm. So when we are talking about diversity, we cannot talk about these things without mm. talking about what got us here mm. and that's why I feel like my purpose is here because rather than us having candy floss conversations about diversity this women that and oh this is what it's like to be in this world let's have real conversations because mm. none of these things would be happening with like mm. white supremacist ideology which was brought to us in 1735 ideally when it was documented yeah. by Carolus Linnaeus that gave us the categorizations of race as homo afar and mm -hmm. homo europaeus that's where we started so if you want to talk about men let's start with Carolus Linnaeus work backwards, then work forward. Mm. So I just give you that to work. Just, with. just, just, oh, just, 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 just uh, actually, go, go, go for it. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say like, 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 amazing, and thank you. And like, I, I came here because I hoped that there would be people like you and like other people here who, who are so armed with information and statistics and, and, and knowledge. I don't think we can have this conversation unemotively because we're we're human beings and we're not we're not robots and we we feel things. And again. All I can do is sit here and tell you how things are from my perspective. And, and to be honest, like if 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 you're all telling me that I'm I've been raised in a society that's making me see things through this lens, I believe you. I believe you, man. Teach me, like open it up. There's so much us and them. It's really, mm. I think it's toxic. I'm last thing. I'm reading a book right now called uh, Stalin: The Court of the Red Tsar. Right, and this this is this is a country 
that was around in my parents' time, right? Filled, filled, filled with, with white people. And they have quotas. They have quotas of how many Ukrainians have to be shot this month, mm. right? It doesn't matter if they've committed a crime. Like mm. this, this, this is how it is. And when, mm. I, when I say um, we're one of the free societies, I actually, I, I completely hear the things that you were saying to me. And actually uh, that freedom has been bought with blood right and and it's 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 the blood of people that weren't my ancestors okay and i and i and i and i hear this but what i am saying is there are there are part have you read like yonmi park's book about what it's like in north korea when you she comes out of hospital from a, a appendectomy and she sees the rats eating the dead children and then a lot, living children are catching the rats so that mm. they can eat the rats and it's this it's this vicious circle and what i am saying what i am saying is i think at some point at some moment we have to look around and go okay if I tell my story, everything will get better. Mm. Like everything will get better because the conversation will be richer in some way. And that's a good thing. And the only point I'm trying to make is not that it's not tyrannical, not that it's not corrupt. And actually the, the things you say, like give me goosebumps because, because they're so emotively difficult to listen to. But what I will say is that if what Amelda said earlier, if everyone in this, if everyone in this room felt impassioned enough to, 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 to speak their experience into the communal pot, then I think the pot the pot improves, and it's just mm. it's just we're living in a time when you can do that mm. a lot. I, I just wanted I just wanted to I wanted to add. I thought that was an amazing discourse between you two, and I think that um, what the reasoning in why each and every one of you were picked and why our conversations are happening the way that they are is because we are a image of Britain. We are an image of Britain, and you were all picked very particularly. And not because I was like, oh, this person's gonna go, or this person, no, this is gonna happen, because I respect everything. I've had very good conversations with each and every one of you, yeah. or been a fan of the work that you do, and I've wanted to have a, we, we wanted to have a very, very good conversation. We do not live the same lives. Mm. And the thing, and this is, this is Michael's perspective. We do not live the same lives. We have never lived the same lives. Mm. And what we have been told what, and again, there is a reason why there may be a communal kind of like Understand. a fluency between the four of us or, and then, there, and then it will jump over here and then it will jump over here and then it will retract back. And it's like, oh, because some people have lived very, very similar experiences because what I believe very based on, very based on the um, colonization. I think when you say colonization in this country, people don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Um, was hate, were, what, what, why does, um, what does Haiti have to do with England? What does, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not gonna answer the question. What does Haiti have to do with England? What does Barbados have to do with England? What does Jamaica have to do with England? Who, where was the majority of slavery? Was it in America or was it, or was it outside in the Caribbean? Mm -hmm. Find out, for, I, think, I think that, this is, this is actually for the audience. Mm -hmm. I, be, I believe that England, as a country should take its head out of its ass and start thinking about where did we get all this from? Because what happens is with the, with the Will Smith conversation, the reason why there are so many black people standing behind Will and Jada is because we know what it's like for somebody to cuss your mum in a supermarket or to look at your face and call you a nigger and you want to spark that person out, but you won't because of the police. Mm. You won't because, and not just because I'll get arrested and then I'll, and then I'll front bail and I'll come back and you know, I'll carry on my life because I could get killed. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's a completely different life experience to somebody who is struggling with their gender identity or somebody that is struggling with the, um, with the patriarchy or somebody that is struggling with the ide ideology that we are not all in this together. We've never been in this together. And I think that- why you shouldn't hit that person in the supermarket. Pardon, say again. That's not why you shouldn't hit that person in the supermarket. It's because it's because we're surely, like surely we're we're all collectively aiming, aiming in a direction where we no, do, where no, no, we're not. We're well, sorry to cut you. We're not. We're not all going in the same direction. We are told that we're going in the same direction, and that's what the that's almost what this diversity thing is, right? Because did any of you have a say in what these quotas were? Did any of you have? A, did anyone? Did anyone fill out any forms? White people included. Did anyone, did anyone fill out any forms on, this is what we want, this is what we want, um, this, is what, this is how we want to change our industry. Let's talk to our industry. I believe this is the first chat that I've seen of people within the industry talking about the industry. Do you know why? Because most people don't want to talk about the industry because everyone's got it good. We don't live the same experiences. And all we have to do is look at the things that you care about. And I think that we always bring it back to this, right? There are certain issues that you care about. Stick to that. Stick to what you care yeah. about. 
Yeah. Stick to what you care about. But what happens is particularly but what I find within within um, within the white community, and what I feel like is kind of happening in this in this conversation, I feel I let me not speak for you, but I believe that a lot of the emotion is coming from the idea of us all coming together as one and pushing out out of these out of these oppressive mind states and pushing out of this way of thinking that is that is that is kind of redu reductive. If you look at what happens in North Korea, if you look at what happens outside, there are there are certain people there are certain people that can't buy bread right now. Give a fuck about North Korea. I don't care how that looks. Do you know what I mean? That's how somebody is going to think right now. And whether that is right or wrong in the global conversation, there are some people that can't even think about the global conversation. There are some people that are dealing with their own impression right now, and I think that, just to round up, I believe that we're not living the whole, the same experiences, and I believe that, and I believe that we're constantly told by certain people, because I think, bringing it back to this villainous thing, um, there are a certain group of like, villainous people. When I speak about the system of oppression, I feel like if I, if I spoke to any of the females on this, on this panel about misogyny, misogyny, misogynoir, or the patriarchy, the basic, the basic layman term um, 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 explanation would be a system of oppression. So, I mean, there is a group of people that are oppressing me because of how I look or how I am because they have made that so. Whenever we bring it up, when it comes to racism in this conversation, everybody has, everybody's got so much vim. Everybody's got so much to say. People don't, be, we live in a world where white people don't even like to be called white. Do you understand what I'm saying? White people don't go home and talk and go, my mom is, my, me and my white mom are having Christmas. That doesn't happen. Because they don't believe that whiteness even exists. It wasn't, you didn't have any form in it. You didn't create it. It was created for you. That doesn't mean that within the system of white supremacy, there isn't poverty. That isn't that the system of capitalism within itself is still um, it's still unequal. <laughs> I mean, there's always going to be inequality, but everyone is going to band together in the groups in which they in which they align. And I can only you can only band together in the groups that you align if you feel safe. And right now, when it comes to the conversation of I know I'm going on a little bit of one, but I know when it when we're right now when we're talking about this diversity conversation, I do not feel safe. I don't feel like my work feels safe. So you have to choose it on an individual basis. And there are amazing producers that I've met, amazing developing executives that have seen me for a human. But that's not, that's not the majority. Mm. Yeah. That's what I wanted to add. I f I'm going to let us take a break. Yeah, let's take a break. Yeah, yeah. After that. <laughs> <laughs> let's take a break and then, yeah, I was going to take a break. Come back. Oh, God. <laughs> Are you tired of Malaysian people? Introducing Scumge, the tried and tested formula that drastically reduces racially induced headaches. Scumge for whites by Hope Hana. Are you desperately struggling to befriend your first ethnic minority pal? You're not alone. Nine out of ten men are socially impotent just like you. But now there's an answer. Introducing Schlaps by Hotana, the pill designed to open up conversations with guys and gals who just don't look like you, in spite of your best efforts. Schlaps for men. Um, so, carrying on from our conversation from before, Benny, you had a great point that you wanted to... I did have a great point, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, no, I wanted to ask, because we were talking about diversity and all that stuff, and I think when we talk about those kind of things, it can quite feel, in terms of our ambitions, it can quite feel like a separatist thing. But I was also curious to know, like, what's our thoughts on this whole idea of like us all coming together and mm. oneness and us all being connected um, mm. within this industry, which is, I don't know, is that a utopian idea? Is that realistic? Like, what are your thoughts when it mm. comes to oneness One. mm. with our, do you know what I mean, aspirations of being celebrated in our diversity, but mm. all coming together mm -hmm. in our authentic, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? Um, I, 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 feel, I don't know, maybe I, sometimes I feel really naive talking and just feeling like I just want everyone to be on an equal playing field. I think like just an, an equal playing field, equal, not equality for all, but an equal playing field, like everyone has the opportunity, almost like there would be no obstacles. Like that is my utopia, if anything. Like nobody would have any obstacles based on their race or their sexual orientation, or, you, do you know what I mean? It would just be, is your work good? And that's it, do you know what I mean? Are mm. you, is what you're, I'm focusing on what you're doing. I couldn't, I couldn't give a damn about 
Well, that's the opposite of being with yourself. Like, it's the workers. <laughs> like, what, I mean, so, so often, like, I agree with you. Like, wouldn't it be nice if the only obstacle was is your, is, is your yeah. work? Your skill set, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And I think if you wanted to change something, it would have to be to kind of um, improve your skill set and to have to, you know, work at your whatever it is that you're doing to get better mm. rather than all these other, like, things that we have to, like, deal with, I think. And, I to, just to ask, um, isn't that, like... Like the idea of being better or getting to the point of good, based on an idea of what good is. Do you know what I mean? Well, individually, I think everyone's yeah. separate. Like, everyone's got different idea ideas on what yeah. that good thing is. Um, that's a good point. I uh, yes, yes, it is because your version of good mm -hmm. could be completely worse. It could be trashed yeah. to me, and I'd yeah, be like, yeah. "Oh, you think that you're good?" I, well, for example. We talk about Tyler Perry movies a lot. We do. We do. Oh, shoot. We do. Here we go. Now, we do. I love you, Tyler. I'm just Tyler saying. <laughs> Put out no, Tyler. Tyler. <laughs> Lots of wigs. Now, Lots of wigs. I, I, I believe that Tyler Perry is a practitioner. I do. Mm -hmm. I think that he has... He has a certain way of creating projects. Yes. And... For me, in my opinion, that is not how I would do it. Yeah. Mm. Um, <laughs> that is not how I, but Tyler. I don't, I don't want to say that it's not good because he makes millions at the box office. Mm. I don't want yes. he people. Yes. He has a demographic that yeah. are clinging onto his every word. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And to them, they're like. Did you see, what was that? A Full From Grace. Oh, oh, it was wonderful. I have family members. My <laughs> mum came to me. She doesn't watch like English films. She said, oh, I saw um, <laughs> uh, For Grace, Grace. And I was like, A Full From Grace. She was like, oh, it's very good. I was like, this is why you shouldn't trust people. Yeah, this is why you shouldn't trust people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, <laughs> she followed the storyline. She yeah. loved it. I was like, but it's this, is, this, is, this, is not a, this is not how I would do that. Of film. course, but Tyler, Tyler knows going kind of what from what was Tom was saying, like it isn't it isn't just based on being good, it's being based on like the business as well. And I think that I think that a lot of the time we get told that within this industry, like, um, oh you wouldn't be able to work for the business. But I feel like Tyler Perry is a good example of that. Yes. He 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 has a demographic Christian black mothers. Do you know what I mean? In Atlanta, Georgia, those those women are gonna watch those movies every day. Mm. And also, but but we understand that Tyler Perry has made his films based on how he made his theatre shows. Yeah. Mm. That's why they all have the kind of, they all have the same kind of like run, run time, they have mm. the same kind of characters, mm. everything's a little bit more melodramatic. Mm. Um, and it's not necessarily something, bit. It's yeah, I mean a lot. And it's not something that either of us would ever want to make, but he does have the space to do that. Yes. Because in America, you it, it, to a certain degree because I think I do think he's an anomaly and I think that I think that he did it, it, also what he did still took a lot of graft because yeah. he started and then he worked with Lionsgate and he mm. worked with Lionsgate for a while and now he owns a lot mm. and the privilege of being able to own a lot mm. where it's like bigger than everyone else bigger than yeah. everyone else's where Black Panther and Everyone comes to shoot. It's like, I can make whatever the fuck I want and you don't need to tell me anything. Mm -hmm. And he makes all of his movies for about 20 million. And he, get, and he always makes his money back. Yeah, he understands the business. And he understands how the business works for himself. Um, but is that something that I would necessarily do? Is that, is, is, his, is his work? Uh, do I identify with Tyler Perry's work? In a certain way, like when, like, like watching last in The Temptations when I was in college. Oh, God. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Watching that movie or whatever. Yeah. Um, I remember that. But, yeah, um, but I, I think, like, in terms of, like, good and quality, I feel like, it, like you're right in terms of, like, good is different for different people. But again, I, I just... It, it, it's, I can only speak on, like, how I can... How, how I feel and what I feel is good and my idea of what good is. And I feel like if... It all depends. It all depends. But, I, my yeah. my well, if point want, is if we, if we want, if, 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 if we want oneness in a film industry, then I believe that we should all have the same tools and the same playing field to be able access to make to resources, and yeah. access to resources to make the exact same business moves as anybody else which is basically i am a writer i know how to and when, and if i make five films i'm going to gain an audience and at some point people are going to watch my films because they're going to be like i want to see what my uh, my connor's got a new film i want to see that or uh, uh this production company hot honor has done something i want to see that and you will cultivate your audience and you will continue it's like it's like what a lot of social media people are doing at mm -hmm. the moment and it's proving that you can 
take, you can take from the from the ground up, build your tribe. Like Fletcher was saying, I build my 500 and they'll come and watch my film. Mm -hmm. And that's un, and that's understanding the business, but I know I'm I'm sure it takes craft and it takes a and it takes and and this is where this is where how can oneness work when there is where if I believe there is a system of oppression that makes it so much harder just to be able to make a film. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Mm. Just to be able, like I, I, I came into the game trying to. Um, I worked on a film with. I worked on a film with Melda and and Tom and um, yes. and and Yaz, um, which Yaz, which Yaz was, Yaz was in. Mm. And then after that, me and Melda, me and Melda started a production company. Um, me and Melda started a production production company. And since then, um, which is how we found Emily, we started that process of making that script. And it was it was um it was a story at the time that was um that had. Um, for black females with supernatural abilities. Mm. And, and this was in 2006, 17. 17. Wow. So, and that script went through the ringer. And it went through the ringer because I had no idea of how this industry worked. Neither of us had gone to film. Yeah, and we, and, and, and I think that come back to that point of being good and stuff, it was bad. Yeah, yeah. It yeah, the, a, the original was a, script was bad. Yeah, it yeah. was surprising how you guys even were like, Oh, I'm yeah. sure Emily will politely blame. No, it was, no, it was, good. Yeah, it was yeah, yeah. terrible. Yeah. The first, again, we've spoken about this before. The mm. first draft was 324 pages yeah. or whatever oh, it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, I we, it, and I took it to production companies and screened up Vim. people on the phone going, With Vim. "Oh, if I was Quentin Tarantino, you, know, you would." You wouldn't. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was, I was screaming. I was screaming. I was screaming. I was, I was like, if, wow. if this was something else, because I felt like, I felt like. I couldn't even be mediocre. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I felt like I feel like I didn't. My work couldn't be mediocre. Mm. And I'm um, looking back at it now. That project has has enveloped and enveloped and enveloped and enveloped and and it's just kind of got to this point now where I missed I missed the mark because now all the supernatural stuff is coming out. Mm. And um and I I wish I had the business tools at that yeah. point mm. to be able to understand how to bring down my script and how to do that. But since since that we got signed to Christina and now mm. my script's a, a million times better. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And and I feel like I have the tools now to be able to build, but that and power and that wealth is a very difficult mm. thing. I also wonder how much of that can we kind of um how much race does play a part in that, mm. whether it's like, was it because you were not good? Because I think that we, because mm. at the time we were sort of like, it's hard for black British filmmakers to make something yeah. with a really bad script. Well, particularly, but then yeah. I think when looking back on it now that we've honed in on our skill set, I think we realised, or you were honed in on your skill set mm -hmm. in regards to that, I mm. think we realised, oh, it was, it, it might have had more to do with the fact that the script was bad because some of the people you went to yes. were championing black yeah. writers. Well, well I, was, I, was, I was having, I hope you guys are man, um, I was having this conversation in 2016. I was, I was going to the production companies with no agent, with no agent, no backing, no nothing, no money in our pockets. Me and Mother would, me and Mother would, I would bump train and we would get to thing and, mm. I went and we would get into the Netflix building. We had meetings with all of these people and we would sit with a script and be like, Emily can tell you, we'd sit with a script and be like, okay, we're chatting with this person, we're chatting with this person. This was, this yeah. was going and it just, it, it was, it was a really, it was a really, really difficult, really difficult process. But I think. It's an look, you see, I thought I was going to say that it's an interesting thing, but. I don't think race ever leaves the conversation, mm. right? Because regardless of whether the script was horrendous, mm. right? White men specifically write horrendous scripts all of the time, yeah. but they're given the space and they're given people to help them either make it better or mm. let's try something else. I always mm. give the example of Lena Dunham. Mm. When it came to girls, yeah. she said she wrote, she said with her chest, that she gave them a page or half a page yeah. of her treatment and she said, this is what I want to make. And HBO gave her money yeah. to make something that she'd even, she hadn't even given them a script. She just thought it, thought it yeah. out and they said, oh, but she had a short film out before. She had a short film out, not a series. You didn't know whether she could do a series or not, yeah. whether she could develop these characters or not. Yeah. So I say that to say like, when we're talking about equal playing field, we also should be talking about an equal access to be shit. As yes. I said it earlier, yeah. like, I, I just want space to be horrid. Oh, yeah. I want you to watch it and be like, my God, what is this? But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. the same way that you watch other people's things yeah. and think, my God, that what, it, what is this? And that yeah. shouldn't write me off. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I should be able to make that and come back to you and say, you know what, I've had another idea. Can I have 10 million pounds? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, you yeah, yeah. and you give it to me yeah, as yeah. A, the way you've given other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, um, just, just sorry, buddy, just to add, but when we were when we were in that when we were in that kind of early early manifestation of Fort Honor, mm -hmm. 
there was a lot of there was a lot of ideas that were being thrown out to certain companies, which I won't name. Mm. Um, but certain certain ideas, like um, we have, this is the first time we got in touch with Benny. Um, we have got an idea of making oh, yes. um, twelve shorts mm. about these Black British projects, and hopefully we can put them out, and maybe mm. that would be that be something. And that p particular production company said, um, "Oh, we don't we don't do we don't, we, do don't we don't do shorts, and we wouldn't be able to help you with that." George Floyd dies. And now they do shorts. And now they do shorts. Yeah. So, and, and, and that's, not, that's not the development executive, that's the head. Mm. And that, that is frustrating because you go, well, was I on the wrong end of somebody dying? <laughs> do, you, do you understand what I'm saying? And was it, it I on the wrong end of someone, yeah, so yeah. someone understanding yeah. what racism yeah. is? Yeah. The world, so, yeah. they don't understand what racism yeah. is, yeah. but Understa they yeah. understand that Yeah, understanding that person dying. Because yeah. 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 I feel like that's a lot, that's where a lot of the opportunities have kind of, for, for the black diaspora, that's where a lot of the kind of opportunities have come through have come under the, under the death of a man. And that is another reason why it's kind of like, I don't want to touch that at all. Yeah. Because it's like, somebody died and now we're using it as like a, thing to be like, hey, let's all come together. And it's like, no, but there was no, there was no, no one won. Yeah. Man died. Mm -hmm. We saw and him. We saw him. Yeah. And men are still think. dying. And and like we never spoke about Breonna Taylor. And we mm -hmm. and, and and even before Breonna Taylor, we didn't talk about Sandra Bland. Mm -hmm. We said that Michael Brown was was a thug. Mm -hmm. We said that we said that Tamar Rice deserved to be shot at 12 years old. And do you know what I mean? And you bring that up. Um, people that went to uni university with me know that this is something that I've been talking about forever. Um, Tamir Rice, I cried buckets mm. when I saw that video of a 12 year old with a BB gun. They didn't even get out of the car. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? And one man can die in the middle of a pandemic and that switches the conversation of how we do things. I'm, I just think it's kind of sick. Even talking about building yeah. on blood. Even agents tell you um, to put it in your pitch deck now. Mm. That was one, that was the hardest thing for me to read as a creative, because you know, I, I write and I do all these other things, like in terms of um, literally like, you know, non-fiction and fiction. Yeah. And my proposals, you, you were hearing around the industry, people saying that if you want your proposal to be picked up and you want big money, yeah. better throw George Floyd in there, they're yeah. two words, mm. they're yeah. not gonna be able to, and I felt, sick because I thought really that's where we're at that's like that's where we're at if, yeah. you, you, if, you, if you want your book out yeah. just throw that in the proposal and yeah. your, propos your proposal your book might have nothing to do yeah. with George Floyd but yeah. just you throw that in there and watch them yeah. panic and give you the money and yeah. I said I'll be damned I will not do such because I would hate for mm. somebody to get their hand on my proposal later and be like she did what yeah. Yeah. so if I'm going to get it um, if you know if I'm going to get these book deals if I'm going to get these things let yeah. me get it on the merit of what I have yeah. put there yeah. Yeah. and um, and if it's not going to yeah. work then it's not going to work but yeah. we're now seeing all of those people who put pro their George Floyd in their proposals all the what? movies yeah. all the documentaries all of the things are coming out now all mm. the books are coming out yeah. now and yeah. you can see it yeah. you can see yeah. what, and what they're doing there. Like, yeah. have a look at our Black Lives Matter list and mm. then you type it and it's euphoria yeah. it's like, <laughs> you're like what you're like what do you know what I mean I love euphoria but what does that have to do with do you know what I mean like what 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 um, yeah no it's, it's very strange and if that book was if when if you were making that book in 2016 imagine do you know what I mean? Would that even even got a look at? And I think that that's kind of what I mean when we're talking about systemic oppression. Like mm. that, the fact that your agent feels like that, that's even something to talk about. The fact that you, when it happened, and you're talking to people coming up, and I'm talking, to, I'm talking to people that have made films, mm. films, and they go, get on this, yeah. get on this, films that, films that. If I said, films, mm. and it's like, oh, you know. Get on this because you know this is a train. Mm. Talking to talking to people that I know are coming up. Now maybe we need to do this. Um, me and Amanda always have like back and forth whenever there is a hey we're doing a Black History Month thing or hey we're doing a Black Day <laughs> thing because Amanda's like nope and I'm kind of like maybe yeah I don't I don't do I, I don't do I, I, yeah. I don't bother with that. So I I hate the quota thing. I mm. hate the quota thing. I hate the here's an opportunity for the Black Day. Here's an opportunity for the Black Month. Yeah, here's yeah. an opportunity for I the... Because I go... Uh, is it, it... This is actually just because I'm... Just because I'm Black. It's got nothing oh, yes. to do with what I have to offer. Oh, yes. And also, after the fact, what is going to happen to... Am I going to be thrown to the wayside? Great, thank you for your mm. Black paintbrush and we'll see you later. Yeah, thank you for it's filling like, the quota. Yeah, but then again, but then again, you... But then also, like... People are getting opportunities to like write 
scripts that well, are on telly. Exactly. And then they are able to go into rooms and yeah. go, hey, I wrote that. Yeah. They only got one episode, but I wrote that. Yeah. Hey, I did this I did this episode of this soap. Hey, I did this for this. Yeah. And you go, well, it's an opportunity. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm moving forward and mm. maybe it maybe it does bring you into the sex education um, writer's mm. room yeah. and, then, and, then you, and then you give him green eyes and then you go in and then you're able to, I mean, <laughs> and then you yeah, get to take yeah. out the green, eyes. Out the green <laughs> eyes in your own project. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that is, you know what I mean? Maybe that's, maybe that's it. Maybe that's well, it. That, that, yeah. The compromise. Is really, the compromise is, is, it's, is, is, is it's, horrible. It's difficult. How um difficult. how do you guys how do you guys feel about um social media and and how does that affect how does that affect you like yeah your I careers? have a, I actually have a full question here. Does social media mm -hmm. allow the BAME artist sorry I know you hate that to create without adhering to quotas and industry standards? Because obviously I look, we're all you know in the same generation here. I'm not going to deny, but yeah. Mm. Um and we've all we're all all on social media mm. and. We know that social media is a platform where you can create something and it pop off or put something up and it, and it go viral or whatever and people actually listen to you and mm. you have now have a voice. Do we feel like we can we separate social media from the industry? Mm. And how do we feel like, what do we feel like about the relationship between the two? You know, Do we feel like there's more freedom in terms of creating mm. or are we still almost like, getting crumbs because mm. uh, it's like social media. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Like, um, I'm, I'm going to throw that yeah. question, I'm going to throw that question out to the, to, um, to the cool. field. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a somewhat controversial perspective on this. Mm -hmm. Let's hear it. I think social media gives us less of an excuse to look at something outside of ourselves to be like, why, you're the reason why I'm not doing my thing. Controversial yet correct. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hand on heart. Right, right. No, I, I think I totally agree. We, there's so much talent. You know when, you know, we keep alluding to it, but when people were like, oh, such and such made that joke, it was a joke. Comedians make jokes. Um, why, why he, did he deserve a slap for it? We're all out. The jury's at the yeah. jury. No, 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 I'm just saying, no, no, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I gave that example to say, there are funny people on the internet. My yeah. God, yeah. humans yeah. are oh hilarious. God. They, really are. they are so funny and they're not trained comedians. They no. haven't, you know, no. and yet, they don't go around offending people. They don't go around <laughs> punching down. Right. You know, they don't go around punching down. Like I, I've, right. I've watched so many informative, so many brilliantly edited, pr produced, well-made, yeah. yeah. um, TikToks and yeah. vines and and things like that. And I'm like, wow, people are really talented. You know, like mm. really talented. And mm. you go on someone's page randomly one day, and they've got like two million followers. You're like, I've never heard of you. Yeah. Yeah. And then you yeah. look at their yeah. stuff, and you're like. Um, um, you bang that, yeah, that, that yeah, is yeah. that is exactly. brilliant work so without having you can't say that you, you couldn't make it because you don't have the equipment mm. you couldn't say that you couldn't make it because you can't find the people because literally people are one man team they'll set the uh, iPhone yeah. up there film from that angle yeah, move it there film from that angle yeah. and then they put it together and they're mm. giving you well thought out well written brilliant content so I think that that's why we're seeing this kind of merging where mm. TikTok influencers as people like to say are getting the roles in Tyler Perry things and mm -hmm. other things because yeah. we're not having to audition anymore. Like, my God, I'm so tired of self-tapes. If somebody asks oh, me for yeah. another, uh, another self-tape, maybe me too, I'll slap. Because <laughs> I'm, tired, <laughs> I'm tired of self-tape because it's out of your hands. But you're right. like, right. I'm talented. Can you just let me yeah, yeah. show you? Yeah. Um, and I know that's what the self-tape is meant to do, but it also r limits you. Mm. So then you have the social media where you can make what you want to make. Yeah. And then people watch it, they like it, they don't. Some of my, video, um, my videos that I've got over a million views for, mm. I just thought, oh, you know what would be funny? If I got one of my friends and we made, and I've written this uh, short skit mm. about colonial clean, because you know, you go to, <laughs> you go to audition sometimes and then they, you realize what the product is when you get there, and you're like, fuck. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, I, I just created the, this product that mm. was horrendous yeah. and we, we did that with each other and the views were mad mm. and so um it was from watching one of those that one of the bbc people asked me to come into the writer's room mm. for something just because of that amazing of that video yeah, yeah, yeah. so i i agree that we don't really have an excuse like if we really want something to be out there you know when i was talking about working naturally that's pretty much what i mean yeah. like yeah. as long as we get something out there web series things like just yeah, yeah. get something out there yeah. to start with yeah. i know we don't want to keep referring to america yeah. but awkward black girl with Issa Rae. yeah we have to put that the thing out there but you also nothing. have to be consistent yeah. with the yeah. thing you can't just make one thing you have to be consistent with the thing yeah. Yeah. enough that people can trust you yeah. and then 
who knows where you'll go. But even if you don't go, you know, like I was saying earlier, even if we don't go into the institution, yeah. you have enough money and capital and reputation mm. to keep making your thing yeah. from the outside. Mm. Yeah. Um, and maybe that's what we want. Maybe if we're talking about we're oneness, maybe we, we all just want to make things, but maybe we want to make it from the outside. Yeah. Maybe, you know, like yeah. making, your fi- yeah. making your film, having it out on the independent circuit. Yeah. Like, Maybe, that's maybe just where we want to yeah. be, yeah. and then yeah. and, and be proud of it. I feel like it. that might be the route in which we're going. Yeah, because I know, because I know, I know, we made um, the film that we the film that we were supposed to make never never happened. Maybe it will at one, at one point. We made two shorts, and from those two shorts, that's how we got that's how we got signed to an agent. Mm. And yeah. since it's been like it's been it's been thing, and that was that was that was a graft. It was a graft and a half to do it, but um, but it's um, I, sorry, sorry. Really quickly, yeah. Yeah. going back because you said something about um, or you said something about equal equal mm-hmm. opportunities mm-hmm. and we kind of went into that and I at the time I was inspired to say something about like there is like the fact that it's been quite hard on people of that di- um, diverse backgrounds to get in and do certain things mm. do you know what I mean the fact that there hasn't been equality in that realm yeah. has if we have the perspective to see it or the foresight to see it has given us something mm. do you know what I'm saying to it's given us the foresight to stop looking at do you know what I mean? Yeah, mm-hmm. stop wanting a seat at the table. Do you know what I'm saying? There's this like, like, creative. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? Because we, we reference black Twitter, but black Twitter only came about from not having mainstream spaces to yeah, talk yeah. about yeah, things. Exactly. And so then suddenly yeah. black Twitter becomes the place that all the brands, all the um, organisations come to to extrapolate to say, right? yeah. and without giving Nando's. profit. Yeah. Yeah. They come and take all On your slang, they come yeah, and take yeah. all your yeah. things, and maybe yeah. they co-opt it later, but they yeah. come to black quote unquote black Twitter yeah. to take the things you go on Vine the people that are, or TikTok you remember when the TikTokers did a strike because mm. the black creators they were finding yeah. that the white creators were taking yeah. their and things they and then they, yeah. they were getting lots of money and lots of um, mm-hmm. visibility oh, yeah. and they went on strike and I think that that's beautiful because if we're talking about oneness give credit where credit is due if you've mm. been inspired by someone make sure you signpost mm. that person yeah. so they can also be seen because due to the current society that we live in if mm. you take my dance move and you're white you're gonna get the one. You're the one invited onto Jimmy Fallon, yeah, not, not yeah. me. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it's like it almost goes back to the gatekeeping thing as well. Because mm-hmm. the one that comes to mind when you were speaking about it earlier about Michaela Cole mm-hmm. is the Phoebe Waller Bridge thing, yeah. and it's like, and Phoebe Waller did it. Did Fleabag, you know, great. Yeah. No. And then uh, Michaela Cole did I May Destroy You. And yeah. then people discovered like chewing gum. Yeah. Uh, which mm. had, yeah. she, which was, I think, originally on the BBC. Yeah. Channel yeah. 4. Channel, Channel 4. 4. Yeah. Um, but it had begun as a stage show. Yeah, yeah, Just yeah, as yeah, Fleabag yeah, had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was then like I Chewing on Dreams or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Like and, and it had to like undergo a revision, I think, mm-hmm. from when it got made. Because I think it was about the character was younger. So they revised that mm-hmm. up. But so many people came in and were like, Oh, if you love Fleabag, you'll love chewing gum. And they were like, and this gatekeeping kind of thing, mm. it was like, Phoebe Waller Bridger is the one who's doing the comedy that's breaking the fourth wall. Yeah. And, all of that. and so they're like, yeah, but Michaela Cole was doing it before. Yeah. And, we, we, you know, it's, we don't need to, they have two very different things. Yeah. Chewing gum dreams is not Fleabag. And, course, and I'm not, yeah. I'm not conflating them at all. But it's like, we acted like, and I say we as a society, yeah. Yeah. acted like Fleabag was the first thing yeah. to do this yeah. because it was written by a woman. I don't know. Mm. I don't know why that began. Yeah. Mm. I'm yeah, not yeah. taking away any of its credibility or like any of her skills as a writer, mm. but it's going, but this work was being made before. Yeah. Mm. It had, and if I'm, I may, I may be getting the dates wrong, but I'm fairly certain, I mean, Chewing Gum Noobs absolutely aired on TV before Fleabag. Yeah, 100%. And, 100%, 100%, and I think 100%, the theatre show aired 100%, before 100%, Fleabag. 100%, 100%. And they're, they're great examples, because yeah. they, they both came for theatre shows and they went the way up, and it's just like, you do see where the power kind of lies, and yeah. and, 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 and also, and also and it's like, it's an, it's, I feel like there must be a, a massive load, massive amount of pressure on Michaela Cole as well, because yeah. when you become the one, you are the one. Mm. Just like Lupita Nyong'o, Lupita Nyong'o did 12 Years a slave, and now everyone's like, she's like the most beautiful black girl. She can't put her foot wrong. That's what we're back now. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Sit behind Will Smith for the Oscars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man is veering towards was, that conversation. Yeah. 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 What's she doing? Yeah. 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 Would, would, would we like? Would we like? Would we like to get into the conversation? We'll have it. We'll have a vote. Would, 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 would we like to? Do we want to talk about Will Smith? We don't. We don't have to. We can. We can cut this up. It's your podcast. Would you? I mean, we've already said. I've said. I've said what I've said. We've said what we've said. If you want to know what we think about Will Smith. Please watch the episode before this episode and the episode 16. before this yeah, one. Yeah, 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 that yeah one. true. <laughs> I did want to say something though, you know, about the freedom. Because mm. I think for me, like when I did like my web series, mm. the main character, black gay guy, yeah. 
you know, it was based in like uh, Peckham. He was talking about gentrification. Mm. There was a whole episode on chemsex. And I felt absolutely free to do exactly what I wanted mm. to make the show I wanted to make. Um, I did a bit of crowdfunding, mm. but like the rest of it, you know, I funded, you know, yeah. myself. Yeah. And, you know, people always ask me, you know, like when season two coming out, you're going to do another yeah. season. And I would love to, but like, it's, when you're doing stuff on your own back, it just always comes back to, is it feasible? Yeah. So, yeah. So, and I think particularly as black creatives as well, I think you have to get to a point where it's like, how long can you keep working for free? Yeah. yeah. Thing, you yeah. Know? And particularly when you're the one where you're contributing so yourself, much yeah. and being an inspiration board yeah. Yeah. for a lot of other things that come yeah. after you, yeah. you know, you sort of have to ask these questions. Almost, it's almost like also like stopping at stopping at the pilot and like and also or also going. I'm giving you a sample, mm -hmm. and it's like if we want to carry on this script, let's com let's get commissioned because you can commission, and, I mean, and we yeah. are in we are in situations where where as soon as you get one, you can you can there there is proof that we can that we can write a script and we can get a treatment. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes it, sometimes it, it's a it's a really hard game because it's like. You have like you have like like seven projects like Amado and you got like six like me yeah. and it's like man and there's loads more that are writing and you're just like man I just I I I really want to just like give this out but sometimes I'm like actually let me hold back let me hold back and let's start let's start let's start like how, how everybody else starts here's the trick here's here's the one pager here's the idea let's talk but, yeah. so I feel like a, another thing for me though is like imagination i want to gift the british public more so imagination we talk about mm. you know sometimes they say oh something's not going to sell yeah. um, because you know um a 65 year old in um yorkshire won't yeah. want to watch that but you don't know that because it's you violent. haven't given them the opportunity yeah. to choose you've only been giving them period drama after right. period drama after period drama let awesome. them come and tell me i never want to see you on my tv again all right cool yeah. That's fine, but, <laughs> yeah, yeah you know yeah. but you don't even let them do that that's why they lose their minds when they see a christmas commercial that's got black people because you didn't yeah. prep them for yeah, that you didn't, yeah. you didn't prime them for that thing you just threw them in yeah. and they're like what what what's the this meant to be yeah. Yeah. yeah and um so i say that because we did a proof of concept myself kevin morosky and susan mm -hmm. wakoma and tom dunn we did one called more time mm -hmm. um, um and it's a, we wanted to do this mockumentary mm -hmm. and it's based on in an advertising agency mm -hmm. and we are the two um, black women that work in our office and, you know, just the day-to-day -day frustrations that you face in the office space um, or within advertising. Mm. And it looks beautiful because also it has special effects where, like, butterflies are always around Susan. And for yeah. me, I've always got a glowing crown mm. near me. Mm. It just looked incredible. And a lot of Kevin and Tom's money went into doing that mm. because these companies were saying... We need to see it though. We don't know what yeah. you're describing in this document. Yeah. Mm. We need to see it. Yeah. So we made more time. Mm. Everyone pitched in, like everyone was paid as well, which yeah. is always difficult mm. to yeah. do, yeah. but yeah. everyone was paid something. Mm. And so it's made it looks beautiful. The commissioners that all of the networks are um, CC'd or tweeted mm. out to be like, watch this thing. Yeah, yeah. Only one came back and said, oh, let's discuss further. And then I think upon discussing, they were like, yeah, but you know, it just seems a bit unrealistic. Oh, to, I've had that. Two oh, black yeah. women as the leads, and because yeah. n neither of us are light skinned, mm. yeah. it just seemed mm. like they couldn't compute mm. a world error, where. Error, error. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was glitching. Yeah. Like, what, yeah. what does this mean? But. Yeah. That was disheartening because it's like, well, we, we've gone out and made the thing to show you that it works. So where we're actually stuck at now is just imagination. You just yeah. you just can't imagine yeah. that this would ever be a world where these two black women would work in advertising and there's nothing else that we're really referring to in terms of their blackness per se, apart from maybe they might reference food and, mm. you know, things here and there. But ultimately, it's just, they're just two characters. Yeah. Why is it so hard to believe that yeah. they're just characters? I think yeah. that, that, that for me is one of the things coming into this industry that maybe shocked me the most. Yes. And because I was just living in my ignorant bubble as a mm. dark skinned black woman, you know, born the way I am and mm. just going through life. Mm. And then I think when I got into this industry, it was like um, writing characters that uh, look like me, yeah. um, just because they don't mention anything to do with race mm. in that scene, it's like, but is that realistic? Mm. But would two black women be sitting down and not fighting? Yeah. Really? Yeah. It's like, you know, yeah, the, yeah. we're a, yeah. a, a bunch of black kids in a chicken shop. Oh, obviously a knife must be present. Yeah. And it's like, they're not gonna smoke any, yeah. there's no drugs. Yeah. What, that's not real. And it's like, wait, and then I always check myself like, 
Yeah. Am I right? Yeah, did, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have I missed? Am I crazy? Did I, should yeah. there be a drug in there? Yeah, Maybe yeah. I oh, didn't. Freaking annoying. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> even even with even even with the even with the treatments, even with like making the treatments, like a lot of my projects are a lot of my projects will. Um, a mother knows I'll, I'll like watch. Um, I will, there's a really good conversation between Nikki Giovanni and James Baldwin. Yes. I, will, I, I love that conversation. 1972. Um, I watched it and it made me think of. I, I was like, okay, cool. I've got a feature film. Start writing it. Start writing it. And then I'll be like, ah oh, man. Um, there's a lot of like heavy jargon about race that I just kind of understand and I've read the books and I've got, how am I going to pitch that? Because I've been in situations where other projects, like I've made, I've written something that's about um, the Haitian revolution, about a fictionalized kind of like Game of Thrones thingy. And like, you want to, it's like, do I now have to have like a history lesson? Mm -hmm. Do I now need to like explain to you firstly what happened in Haiti? Mm -hmm. And then, because a lot of the time people are like, oh, well, was that even a thing? I was like, yeah, well, there were the free people of color. There were people that mm. owned plantations. And people were like, own plantations? What? Oh, I mean, it's like, and sometimes it's excitement and sometimes it's like too much excitement to the point where it's like, I actually don't know enough about this and I can't go further with this because yeah. I don't have enough information. Same thing happened with Purple. Um, when we made that project, we, I was, we were talking about like, um, um, supernatural abilities being a met, man, manifesting themselves in, um, me, in ma, uh, mental, mental health, me, mental health, and like and like black identity manifesting yes. itself within supernatural abilities. Mm. So without the word black, but using the word like gifted, and yes. being like being like this kind of actu uh, this alien being, mm. and um, that was something that I was explaining and, and going really into it and having this, having a similar conversation we're having now. And the woman was like, "This is really good. This is really good," but. I don't know if this would be palatable to a white audience. And I go, well, how, I, I, I'm not gonna stop making this. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But then I don't, I also don't have the two million to make it. Yeah. So I'm in, I'm in this really, Weird. so then you just have to keep writing projects until one, one hits. Six. Yeah, I'm Emily. And, it's, I, and this is potentially, I'm saying it's like really naively. Mm. I don't know, but it's like, we're talking about money and power. And so mm. you go, if it's not palatable to white audience, it's not getting made. Mm. But you know, I have conversations frequently with men most of the time mm. talking about consuming the media that is made for me. Mm. You know? Yeah. I um Birdman, for example, I'd not watched Birdman until yeah. very recently. And we yeah. went, How did it was amazing, how could you not watch it? And I went, I just I heard the plot of it and yeah. going as a middle-aged man having a crisis, and yeah. I just had no desire to watch it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I watched it and I go, cool, It's I'm sure that film speaks to somebody. Would yeah, I rather yeah. watch Pretty Woman? Yes, yeah. I would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because it's made for me. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's like people go, no, it's not powerful to a white audience and we're gonna lose money. I go, okay, but if you mm. make shit for other audiences, mm. maybe you're gonna make more money mm. because yeah. yeah maybe the white people won't come mm. sure i'm sure there mm. will be some people out there mm. who go i'm not in that so i'm not going to go see that but is that not the reverse currently as yeah. well yeah. 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 i mean like yeah. why yeah, are we course. expecting um any like ethnic group that isn't white yeah. you know to go and see shit that they are not in yeah <laughs> so it's, and yeah. it's like i mean the, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. it is an america film but like Black Panther yeah. was, was the highest grossing yeah. Marvel film to date. And it's there yeah, like, yeah, yeah. why do you think that fucking is? Because all of your regular Marvel fans were going along. Yeah. Then suddenly you were getting another whole other audience yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. So when, and again, I, I, I'm potentially speaking like really, really stupidly. It could just be pure ignorance on my behalf. I'm going, when, you know, the execs go, mm, it's not palatable to a white audience. I go, yeah, but what happens if you just made it for the other audiences? Yeah. But then that would be like, a transference of power. That's what I was saying earlier. That's why I love what, you, what you're saying here because that's exactly it. When we are having surface conversations, I think we forget the subtextual um, mm. discourse that we are also having. Mm. If I say to you, well, I'm not going to make that because it, white audiences won't go and watch it. I'm telling you where the power is. And, mm. and, and, and I'm, I'm saying that, I'm saying to you where the money is. Yeah. But then why then, if you want to have that conversation about money and power, Let's then talk about how did the money end up here mm. and the power end up here. Mm. Let's talk about that, but then we don't talk about that. So, you know, earlier I was saying mm. about if we have foundational conversations about how we came to be, then we understand why mm. we make things for white audiences yeah. because white audiences, generally speaking, of course, we know that class and all these um, other factors can affect mm. this, this statement that I'm about to make. Mm. But white people generally have more disposable income. Mm. Yeah. But that is because of the way that people have been racially minoritized, so they earn less. Mm. And of course we know that there are black people that earn shit loads of money, but mm. if we're talking generally yeah. in the framework of our world, they earn less. So you're thinking whatever they earn, they're not unlikely to go and spend it to go and watch this frivolous thing, or mm. they have so many things competing for the money that they have, mm. but we don't ever articulate that. Instead we go, um, 
white audiences won't watch it because we're basically saying, well, white audiences have more disposable income due to the socioeconomic situations that we found ourselves in globally. Thus, they have more of an opportunity to choose mm. where they are going to spend their money mm -hmm. and we can tap into that. Mm -hmm. That audience that you're mentioning, they're barely staying alive. I'm not risking it. <laughs> but Black Panther did show yeah. that regardless of whether they're barely staying alive or not, they will go pay for something. We're going to the cinema today. Wakanda forever. No, I, I, I think that that's the question we ask them. We keep asking them, but yeah. what about making it for the other audiences? Well, if you don't make it, they won't come mm. because then maybe we're forcing people to have deeper conversations. Yes than they are realising that they need to have. Yeah, but also, I, I almost feel like you used to make this point a lot. I think it's almost, I feel like it's doing a disservice to white people sometimes mm. when it's like, so they're not going to go and watch um, mm. something with an all black cast. Like mm. I watch Friends. I, love yeah. Friends. I watch yeah, One yeah. Tree Hill. Yeah. I yeah. watch hella things with all yeah. white people oh, in yeah. it. Yeah. Why, yeah. why is it that we are not news. giving, yeah. What, yeah. Yeah. why is it that it's like, oh, white people aren't going to watch it? I think that, that idea, I think from the industry yeah. is just well, bizarre. Well, well, you know well, what well, it's, well, it's, well, it's obviously ridiculous and it's, and it's obviously a fantasy because when they need, when they need, um, when they need the people for Encanto, they bring them for the Oscars mm. and then they go, and we're going to put Megan Thee Stallion on top of it. And then they'll be like, do you mean? They'll be like, oh, actually, you know what, let's grab these black actors to be in this project because yeah. it will bring it up. Marvel know what they're doing. Marvel are like, okay, cool, there, there is. We're going to make sure that everyone is in this because we know that that's where the money is. Like, yeah. they, they know they know what it is. They just, it's exactly, they don't want to, they don't want to transfer the wealth. And you do also get these ignorant conversations. I spoke to one of the producers that made um, Kidothood and um, he said, that basically we made we made um, we made we made movies in the time where black people don't want to go to a cinema what? and like black people still don't want to go to a cinema and you know um, black people don't black people don't want to go to a cinema you know we really made that money from the DVD sales because you know loads of black people sold it and I was just like this is I don't I can't I can't continue this conversation with you and I'm not going to follow up any email because you're crazy do you understand <laughs> what I'm saying you're actually crazy and it's yeah. and it is you feel like you, you you kind of put someone in a corner especially when you come as Vim and you're new and you don't give a fuck and you're kind of like, why aren't you making more projects? And they go, well, you know, you know, like people don't go to the cinema. And it's like, what? That doesn't make sense. Yeah. Um, yes, I know that you had a point. But you want to, I, I saw you look at me and... Um, no. <laughs> uh, I can't, I don't know where the point's gone now. But um, no, I just find it interesting as well, because you've got one side where they're like, it's not palatable for white people. And then on the other side, when things like, comes mainstream like Top Boy or whatever and then you've got white people like appropriating it then yeah. Yeah. and then starting to talk like how they talk to Top Boy and then acting like they were from those ends as yeah, well and like yeah, yeah. That, that, that's like the that's the other side of it and then that's when people start to capitalise on it as well and mm. how it shifts as well with that clothing and everything that like posh white people end up wearing that yeah. was that's been appropriate and it's just yeah. interesting how it goes in there. Yeah, yeah and like a full cycle yeah. in that way as well yeah. Yeah, yeah. but then at the end of the day it's all again about power and money yeah, and where it's coming yeah. from and I guess that idea of like education as well like I always think more like independent stuff focus on like educating and like showing a different side of of you know of what someone else lives like or where someone comes from whatever it is mm. but um as soon as like money comes into that it, it does kind of change and I, I always think that as well is like especially with art art's meant to be the thing that's like the other end of like money and power mm, and stuff yeah. it's meant to be a bit that you open up to to have that freedom and liberation to say what you want when you want mm. but like the thing with that like, channel 4 being privatised now there's mm. like mm. Yeah. that's a part of it as well and yeah. like you have these discussions about but um, yeah. yeah that's just pretty much what I was saying like this idea of like education like exactly what you were saying earlier like you want to talk about racism and, and in, a, in a film maybe that you're talking about and like but then people in real life get really scared if you mention colonialism yeah. Yeah. so it's like which one do you start with and you can't talk about people accepting films without bringing it in the education system or yeah. actually when people are growing up telling them what yeah. England's made of so yeah. then instead we, re we rely on like films and independent films yeah. to try yeah. and tell that story yeah because we, 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 live, we live in a country where people don't believe that like people don't understand that Martin Luther King was assassinated yeah. do you know what I mean people 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 only un you know what I mean like colonialism's most mental ones. Well, though. this is the thing. What with yeah. colonialism, I think a lot what of people only really un <laughs> only understand it from like twelve years of slave because that's what yeah. they're given. So they go, oh, okay, so so you're talking about slavery right yeah. now, and it's like, and it's like, oh, oh, you're talking about you're talking about yeah that thing, and it's such an individual situation of all oh, the people that own plantations. Yeah. It's like no man. It's, yeah. I think yeah. I think also a part of it, maybe this is really ignorant as well, but I think a part of it also has to do with um, obviously Hollywood in America being one of the the main front runner of the the, the giver of media, mm. and I think that America. Yeah. Uh, kind of discuss slavery a lot, you yeah. know, and um, 
when it comes to Britain, colonization is one of the main reasons why I'm here. Yeah. I'm sitting in this place right, right now. now, you know, and, and my, my parents wouldn't have come to this country. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, you know, and it, Sierra Leone was it, made because you know, of colonization. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm from Congo, and and um, we weren't part of the transatlantic slave trade, mm. and uh, but I'm, I'm still here. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, what is that? Yeah, you know, why, why, why did they come here for a better life? What, why is that? A, why is that a, a general story mm. across a lot of my? Oh, my parents came here for a better life. My grandparents mm. came here for a better life. What is that? You know, and especially I'm, I'm not Caribbean, so mm. they weren't part of the wind rush, you know, I, mm, I, mm. I, I, that, I can't relate yeah. to that. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I, I don't, I can't, I, I'm sorry, but it's direct not, decision it's not my thing. Economics. Exactly, yeah. it's my parents. So like, if I stay here, my future, I can't even see it. Yeah. Mm. I must go over there yeah. and my children will be able to be successful. And yeah. that comes with its own bag of yeah. issues when we do get here and they do have the kids and we face the, the black British, you know, yeah crap that we have to face yeah. but I, I think for me like in the UK we, we need to have that conversation of colonisation like I, I don't understand how that is it's yeah. almost like Missed. because people say oh slavery happened like before you whatever it happened that time yeah. Yeah. then it's just like oh and they like people love making media about it now because it's like oh it's something that we did in the past and yeah. like we're really sorry about it yeah. and now it's not affecting us like, it's affected by... and we love him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's like it tainted yeah. our history I always find the wording language is so important language um, etymology the root meaning of words how things change over time it's always important that we note them because that's how we tell a different story mm. and that's what we find that happens oh you know it's a shame you know Prince William what is it? He, when he was in Jamaica when mm. they were badding him up he said <laughs> oh um, you know this tainted our you know it's a stain on our history no no it's your present it's yeah. not your history right. it's yeah, your exactly. present yeah. um benedict cumberbatch his family mm -hmm. you know oh, you slave owned slaves david cameron's family mm -hmm. owned slaves um so we can't say that it's in the past because you're still benefiting from the money of right. the, that yeah, now right when we i think the hmrc celebrated on twitter that time when they were like yay you know it's 2050 we finally paid you know paid off all the money we spent when we we're ending slavery no tell them the story you use taxpayer money to um <laughs> the, as, <laughs> to pay back all the money that you spent paying off slave owners mm. but you never paid the people who were enslaved mm. so, so yeah. in 2015 is when they finished paying that off that debt yeah. so but it's how they tweeted it the language that was you've made it sound like we stopped yeah. slavery yeah. because we no no you paid off slave owners because yeah. that was property you finished, you finished. Yeah. yeah yeah we were yeah. Um, still so for yeah right but, but, but reparations <laughs> is off is off the table currently yeah. Yeah, 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 but yeah. then what Not we were the saying um, Imelda yeah. about um, 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 Hollywood and it being the nucleus of our consciousness our cultural consciousness because it is mm. you know everything that we do every now and then all of us at some point will slip into that like, an americanized yeah. accent mm, because yeah. that is what we see as a point of reference mm. right um and i think that that america although we're focusing on the black british conversation it is important to also look at the anxieties that america um makes us aware of through the films that are made in hollywood mm. one um america is a british colony you know, yeah. so that gives us a great place to start. America is a British colony and they went off on their own after they were like, get out. They went off yeah. and did their own thing and yeah. they got really wild with it. Yeah. But Britain, because they got really wild with it, Britain can sit back and be like, well, we're not. Did do that? They yeah, did that. Yeah, but it's yeah, like, yeah. no, you're worse. You just, you hid your hand. Yeah, just but um, mm. why so many invasion films? Why so many alien invasion mm. films? Why are you so scared about invasion? What, mm. what did you do? <laughs> You, right. that's making you so scared of invasions like every day an alien is invading you why is an alien looking for you specifically <laughs> don't you think that's suspicious what? don't you think that's suspicious don't you think that's suspicious <laughs> so um, I say that because we were talking about where we create from and we create from our perspectives right. I can only create from a perspective of, if I'm thinking in the American consciousness, I'm creating from a perspective of guilt. And so I'm gonna make all of these alien invasion films because Jesus, I know I've done some really wayward things. And if people invaded me the way that I have invaded people, this, this could look very, very mad for everybody, you know? Um, 
that we're, that we're being told things all the time. We're being told about the state, the emotional state of the, the uh, societies that we reside in all of the time. Mm. But we need to be the ones to take in the conversation mm. because that's when we see true diversity. We're, if we're like, this is what Hollywood is telling us that is feeling, um, and this is the state of America. Um, this is what Britain is making, telling us that this is the state of Britain because we are focused on period dramas and war. Mm. Thus, when people are saying, why can't I feel, feed my children during the school holidays? I haven't got any money. Boris. Boris is like, well, during the war, <laughs> because that's all the films you've been making. That's all the films you've been making. So you can give them a direct reference point. Well, during the war, you had an apple. So shut the fuck up. <laughs> but we're not, we're not in that right now. So if we keep making films, it allows for governments to keep making narratives about us that we can no longer survive within. So it goes beyond that. Like, I feel like we have a responsibility as creators and if we're talking about diversity, what are we trying to impact? Yeah. Well, we want, a, we want oneness. We want mm. a fairness. So that means we have to look at what's currently being made, mm. what we've been told through what's currently being made, and go, okay, well, what I want to be a part of is telling a different story so then people aren't trapped in the same yeah. like cycle. Yeah. 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 I just want to add something. Yeah. This is going to sound wild, but it's in my heart to say it. There might be someone listening to this conversation and be and think in some weird way this is about us against them or some sort of hate thing. Mm -hmm. But I think when you oppress people, when you put someone, do you know what I mean, someone that has something they want to express, do you know what I mean, under pressure, yeah. it, this is the, you know what I mean, you've got to deal with, the, with the, back in the day I used to hear the thing about ignorance is bliss. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's really hard to be ignorant today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's getting so hard so, to ignore the shit. It's like, yo, like just deal with the truth of what's yeah. going on and how yeah. people feel yeah. and let's move forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why I brought up the oneness question ultimately yeah. because I'm not saying it's an us against anybody thing. No. No. I'm saying, yo, people feel like this and this is what they want to express. Yeah. Let them exp stop putting your warped mentality on this. Is, no, it won't work here, it won't work there. Shut up and just let people express themselves or who they truly intrinsically are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we can, do you know what I mean? We can move forward from that. Well, I think that's always going to be met with resistance. I agree oh, with you. Yeah. Because, because, again, it comes back to the sharing of power. Mm. And that's what doesn't, people, certain people don't want that to happen, mm. you know? Mm. Or institutions. To, to any of the individuals that may be watching this and feeling <laughs> it's <wrong. laughs> I, I think I think it's important. To any of the individuals that feel as though that this is an us against, us against you conversation, turn it off. <laughs> turn it off. No. Turn it off. It is because, not. No, no, no. Us no, 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 no. Turn it off. Turn it off. Because, because when it comes to your own situations and what's going on in your life, you'll be ready to tell us everything. Yeah, yeah. So at the end of the day, if we're here, if we're here, to, if we're here, to, if we're here to, if we're here to learn and we're here to understand, you can come into this conversation. You can comment. You can be like, "This is all bullshit." We're all ready to have a conversation. You can tweet any one of us, and some people reply, some people won't. But do you know what I mean? But you can, we can, you can, you can, you can have that, you can have that conversation. But we have to get to a point. We have to get to a point. Again, I don't believe that we're all living the same in living in the same world. Mm -hmm. So if you don't believe that you're living in the same world as me, go and live in your world. Yeah. Why are you bothered about me? Mm. Oof. Wow. And on that note, wow. I believe it's um, yeah. a wonderful place to close. I think so. I think so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Empty talk. Thank you, guys. <laughs> thank you, thank you, guys, thank you, thank you guys for, for so coming much. to Empty Talk, um, our special roundtable esque yeah. situation with yeah. diversity and yeah. great people. Um, it's been, yeah, it's been, it's, it's been, been a, it's been a phenomenal conversation with yeah. each and every one of you. We're a massive fan of all the things that you do, and um, we're gonna obviously we're gonna shout out all that stuff. But thank you so much, and just continue to create in your own way and continue to build. And for anybody that is out here wanting to create stuff, like do it, do yeah. it without, do it without the mindset of the oppression, and then we can, then we can, then you can start coming into the game, and we can all talk about how we figure it out. Yeah. But um, much love to everyone. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah.